The Louis T. Network is powered by the Card Collector Series. Join me, your man, Louis T., on my journey back into the card collecting space with the Card Collector Series on YouTube. Link is in the description. <laughs> As you guys can see, who else could it be? Me, your man, Louis T., here on Washington Football Overtime. I'm here in the hospital. Don't know when the twins are coming. Could be in a day or two. Stuck here in the hospital. But the boys got it done. They got the dub. Four in a row. Let's go. So, as you can see, I don't have my get up. I don't have my back. It doesn't matter. Back to 500. Wasn't pretty, but it was gritty. And most importantly, it was a dub. We in the building. Mob, stand up, fan, stand up. Brian Johnson, stand up. We got it done. Man, that was intense. Prayers up to Logan Thomas. I hope it was not a significant injury. Yesterday, I watched Alabama lose their wide receiver, John Mechie III, to an ACL injury. I hope it's not something like that. Anytime a guy goes low like that, that first of all, that shit was dirty. I don't appreciate it. But that's why we got the dub. We had to get it for Logan, just like we had to get it for Chase. Six and six, back in the playoffs, seven seed. 49ers are in a struggle with the Seattle Seahawks right now. Don't know how that's going, but if they lose, that could mean we could be the sixth seed. I don't know what, what it sits at right now and what that looks like. Matter of fact, I want to check that score right now just to see what that looks like. But they were down the last time I checked. And da, 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 da. they're down by seven. They're down by a touchdown. So I don't know what that actually means. If they lose and they're six and six and we're six and six, does that mean we jump them, go to six? I don't know. It doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. The bottom line is we're back in the postseason. We're two games back of Dallas, which is where we want to be, and we play them next week. We got everything you want. That's what we were looking for. We got it done. Let's get to the, the comment section. Um, See what you guys have to say. Um, we start the night off with Adrian Hernandez. Thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Adrian writes, we are fighting, baby. No one wants to see this team. Jamin Davis played a hell of a game. He did. You know, he missed some tackles. I'm, I'm not going to sit here and act like Jamin was clean the entire game. But he made the play on the screen. He was where he needed to be all night long. All night long. All night Oh. Oh, night, oh, oh, night. He was there all night. However, when he needed to get it done, he got it done. That screen, that tackle on that screen plate was humongous. It was massive. So, Cole Holcomb also killed it. Great game. Had me sweating per usual on to the next. The linebackers were huge. They were massive in this game. Cole Holcomb broke up not one, two touchdowns in this game. Cole Holcomb was spectacular. Had a breakup on the sidelines with the tight end, taking the ball away from him. Cole Holcomb, spectacular. Jamin Davis, I was glad to see him come back because, remember, he left the field earlier on that play that uh, the Raiders lost their running back, uh, Key and Drake, on. So it was good to see Cole Holcomb and Jamin Davis play the way that they did. They stepped up and they were huge in this game. So as you mentioned, on to the next, on on to the next one. Always hard to move on when you regret one. We don't regret a damn thing. Hopefully Logan is fine. Thank you for the super chat, Adrian Hernandez. Got another one here from CGM87. Um, thank you for the super chat, CGM87, who writes, I knew PI on 20 was coming. Big dub, F Fallis. I, I was nervous. I thought they were let, – let the guys on the field decide. It. Had he continued to hold the jersey, used it to pull him closer to him, sure, knock yourself out. But he didn't do that. Yeah, there was a little tug of the jersey, but he let it go, and that ball was catchable. He played through the ball. He looked back for the football. That's what saved him, if you want to be honest. Him looking back for the football is ultimately what saved him. And so um, huge play by Bobby McCain. Bobby was huge. You know, a lot of y'all don't like to give Bobby credit. Bobby was massive in this game. Some big tackles, some big pass breakups. Bobby McCain was huge. Kendall Fuller was huge on that pass. Derek Carr missed. Zay Jones back corner of the end zone. But Derek Carr, just in case, Zay Jones tried to deaden the impact and, and come up with a, a ridiculous catch like Logan Thomas did. 
Kendall Fuller erased him and made sure that it was a field goal and not a touchdown. Huge play in the game there as well. Um, let's see. Um, all right. I... I think I might have skipped some super chats. My YouTube went out and then it came back in. Again, I'm in the hospital, so y'all gotta bear with me. Um, I apologize if I missed that there. Um, JP, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. My guy, John Perez writes, four in a row, Lou. Now let's go beat Dallas's ass. Indeed. I couldn't have said it any better. Um, this is what we wanted. This is what we asked for. You know, we didn't think we were going to be in this position a month ago, but you beat Tampa and everything changed. And now I told you confidence begets winning. Winning begets confidence is a be beautiful, vicious, flavor, delicious cycle that we are in the midst of right now. It's cyclical. And right now we are killing the game and we hope to keep it that way. Um, the 49ers are driving. They're at the Seattle Seahawks 30 yard line down seven. So that could get interesting. We'll keep our eyes on that game as to what's going on there. I'll keep giving you updates. You guys are better at updates than I am. I'll be in, in the midst of this comment section. But anyhow, let's go beat Dallas. Yeah. The great Watubi. Thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. The great Watubi writes, congrats on the Twins. Great win. They're not here yet. All right. Thank you for being a member of the MOBB, the great Watubi. Thank you for holding it down in the MOBB today. The MOBB, the mob was great, outstanding today. Um, this was a big win, and everybody was feeling it today. I mean, everybody was super positive. You know, it, it could get sometimes a little dicey in there, and we're all nervous. And that's why I love you guys, because we're able to go through this together, because I was on pins and needles in this hospital. I ran out in the hallway to all the nurses, about six nurses sitting at their desks. I said, we won! <laughs> we won! One of them is a Philadelphia Eagles fan. She was like, boo. <laughs> anyway, thank you for the well wishes. Um, I'll keep you guys abreast on when the Twins actually do get here. But this was absolutely a great win indeed. Um, A1 underscore 93. Thank you for the super chat. Thank you for being a member of the MOBB who writes, hashtag mob. We want Dallas. <laughs> this isn't quite 1983. We want Dallas, but um, this feels good. Feels good, feels good. And we definitely want Dallas. The thing I hate, I've already said this, uh, we just played the Raiders off of a 10-day break. We're going to get Dallas off of a 10-day break. I'm sick and tired of teams getting these kinds of breaks. Guess what? The week after that, we get the Philadelphia Eagles fresh off of a bye week. Like, what are we doing here, schedule? Why are you setting us up this way? Uh, you know what? I'm not here to complain. We're just going to knock them down one at a time. As they set them up, we're going to knock them down. Next up on the on the docket, the Dallas Cowboys bring them on, and we're going to knock them down. Set them up, and we're going to knock them down. Let's go. Got another uh, super chat here from Dewan Porch. Thank you for the super chat, Dewan. Greatly appreciate you. Dewan writes, blessings and hail, Lou. And, yes, it was a dirty hit. It was as dirty, dick, dastardly as it gets. I'm I'm still I'm still steaming like Willie Beeman off of that. I mean I'm really really hot. Like if I saw Yannick Ngakwe right now, I probably would need about three four y'all behind me. But I two piece him. I mean I'm I'm that hot right now because that was just as dirty as it gets. Backside of the play and that's like what you gonna do? You gonna go after my man legs on the backside of a play? Really? That's dirt McGurk. Anyway, um, prayers up for Logue. Hopefully he's okay. You never want to see it. You hate to see it. And, and again, he was having a tremendous game. That's what makes it even worse. Got another one here from Twin D. Thank you for the super chat. Twin D, greatly appreciate you. Twin D, thank you for being a member of the MOBB. Right. Twins and a dub? <laughs> Who could ask for anything more? That's what it feels like, man. I mean, I'm on cloud nine right now. And uh, the only thing that can make this better, you know, healthy wife, healthy twins, and uh, we're hoping that that happens here next, you know, 24 to 48 hours. We'll see what happens. But uh, can't get much better than this. The only thing that can top it is, of course, the, the healthy birth of my twins and my wife coming out, feeling no worse for the wear. So um, I really do appreciate you, Twin D. Thank you for your generosity and the big dono, man. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, we did it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, Twin D. Thank you for the support. Trevor Patch. Greatly appreciate you, Trevor. Thank you for being a member of the MOBB who writes, Lou, 
gonna kill me that I can go to Dallas week. Um, oh, he says, gonna kill me that I can't. Is it can or can't? Because, well, you sent me the ticket, so I gotta explain this to y'all. So, Trevor Patch, now that he's super chatting, I'm gonna tell it so everybody can hear it. Trevor Patch sent me two tickets, two dream seat tickets to the Dallas game coming up this week. He donated them to the um, Louis T Network. He said, look, do what you got to do with these. I can't use them. I'm going out of town. Um, literally, Section 39 or right behind Washington's bench. I mean, literally, you can hear the conversations being had on the sidelines. You're that close. Uh, Trev has sent me pictures um, when he's at the game, and he's really close. I mean, right there. So um, we're giving these away. Look, my, my wife was like, yo, maybe we should use those tickets. They're so good. You know what I'm saying? And, and had she not been pregnant, I, it crossed my mind. I thought about it for a second, but obviously we're in no position to be going anywhere. So um, I'm going to do what I always do, and that's give back to you. So um, Trevor Patch, uh, he sent me a list of items to let you guys know about, and we're going to do that next week on the show. And I'm going to let you guys know that uh, these tickets are A1, and it's thanks to Trevor Patch. So Everybody in the comment section, show Trev some love because these tickets would not be available without Trev. So Trevor Patch, big ups to my man for supporting the Louis T Network and giving back to the mob. He can't use them. He says the one thing I'm going to make sure that happens is two more Washington fans get in that building and make some noise for the good guys. So he's doing his part to make sure that that stadium is packed full of Washington football team fans. We know Dallas is going to try to come in and take over. We got to make sure that we pack that stadium with as many Washington fans as we can should be a hell of a football game. Thank you once again to Trevor Patch. He says, start slapping Ron, Ron's playing stickers on those heart monitors in there, then put them up in the merch shop. <laughs> hey, look, I almost needed some uh, resuscitation. You know what I mean? I, they almost had to go get the defibrillator for me. I was in here struggling, especially when Brian Johnson was lining up to kick that field goal. I wanted Ron to go for it. So um, they almost needed it for me. Your man, Louis T. Jason Rogers, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you, my guy. Jason writes, congrats on the twins. Enjoy the life, a uh, lifetime with them. Oh, you know it. You know, once they get here, I'm going to love them, hug them, kiss them, squeeze them, never let them go, man. You know how it is. Anybody that's got kids knows that's how it goes. Whether it's one, two, three, four, five, you love them all the same. Um, and you love them as long as they're alive. So um, I can't wait. Uh, thank you once again. And uh, Jay, I'll be looking for that letter to Victory Monday, man. <laughs> I need it. I need it in my life, Uncle Jay. I need it. Um, Afrocat2136. Thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you, my guy. Afrocat2136 writes, Lou, you know how I feel about safety play. Shays and Bobby balled out. If 25 would have took that pick to the house, I'd have lost my damn mind. Congrats. Taylor got away with one there. Trayvon Myrick should have picked that off, and it should have been a pick six. That's the difference between winning and losing in this league. You got a chance to make a play. They honestly should have picked him off uh, with that tip when Terry tipped it in the air, and Hobbs, for some inexplicable reason, decided he wanted to try to pick it off with one hand instead of going up with two, uh, and it ended up hitting the ground harmlessly. We got away with it there, but, you know, he really got away with one there, throwing off his back foot into a crowded space, easily should have been picked off. And uh, that, that's the difference between winning and losing this league. I mean, we've, we've gotten away with some shit this year. Excuse my language in the hospital. But um, honestly, we've gotten away with some shit because you got the, the, the mulligan on the field goal. Obviously, you know, a couple of games ago, um, you get the two-point conversion. We get the stop there. But you get the penalty on the onside kick. And then obviously here, you know, that should have been a pick. You don't even get a field goal attempt. And instead, we get the field goal attempt, and uh, we get the win. So um, it, it was close, but you, you find a way to win. And I, and I said, we got good juju going. Like, we, we earn this. We deserve this. This is good juju. We earn this. We live and right. We live and right. If we were living foul, that would have went the other way. Damn twin shorty sublime. Thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Damn twin writes. I just discovered my first gray hair on my chest. True story. You, I just discovered my first gray hair right here on my chin. My chinny chin chin. Now, I think I've got one in, up in my hair already, but I was combing the beard earlier. And I was like, whoa, what is this? Some of that is, you know, the, 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 the kids and, you know, just life. You know how life goes. But 
man, these these boys, man, they do it to us every week. We don't get a break. We don't ever get a 10-point victory, and, and we cruising like Smokey Robinson. We ain't never cruising. We always got to sweat it out, but a dub's a dub's a dub. And that's the football league. He says, I'm positive it wasn't there before 4 or 5 Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> Are you sure about that? You're probably right. It probably wasn't there, but it's there now. So anyway, I digress. Thank you for the super chat. Damn twin, shorty, sublime. Triad's very own. Thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Who writes? They say what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, but that dub is coming home with us. Truer words have never been spoken. Now, there was some stuff that went down in Vegas that needs to stay in Vegas that happened in this game that I don't want to see anymore, like a John Bates tight end screen. I don't want to see that shit again. Okay. Leave that in Vegas, right? However, um, that dub is definitely coming back to the DMV where it belongs. I told everyone that was going to the game, you got one job, you got one mission. Go in, get go in, get out, and come back with the package. And they did exactly that. They brought home the dub. And that's what it's all about. Four in a row, six and six, back to 500. How sweet it is. Now, I'm, th- I'm greedy. I want more. Last year, the, the win streak stopped at four last year. Right at this point. I don't want it to stop. Uh-uh, uh-uh. I don't want it to stop. Dre, true statement. Thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. I want to do a little quick uh, checkup on that 49ers game. See what's going on there. Um, that game has come to a final. The Seahawks hold on 30 to 23. So um, they're now six and six. I don't know if that moves them behind us to seven and we move up to six or if they stay at six and we stay at seven. Um, th- again, that doesn't really matter. Because the playoffs don't end today, and and you know there's still more football to be played. But you know, I told you I'm greedy. If we don't get the the, the division, I want the six seed. I'm I'm greedy. I want the six seed. And if the Rams want to trip, I'll take the five seed because those boys over there tripping. They got the Jaguars today, so they beat up on them. But anytime they play somebody with some real chops, those boys are struggling over there. So we'll see what happens. Anyway, um, Dre, true statement. Thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you, Rice. I'm giving a super chat simply because of the commitment to your craft. That's why you're one of the best. Congrats on the win and the new additions, my guy. Thank you, Dre. Uh, again, they're not here yet, but I take all congratulations and all well wishes. Uh, we're just going to continue to pile those onto my wife right now, um, as you know, labor will probably be here over the next 48 hours or so. So. Um, you know, all we can do is pray for the healthy arrival of the twins and my wife coming out of that thing feeling, again, no worse for the wear and uh, us celebrating the arrival and probably the completion of our unit. So uh, thank you for the Super Chat, Dre. Greatly do appreciate you. Um, Condo P, my girl, Condo P. How sweet it is. Thank you for the Super Chat. Greatly appreciate you. Thank you for being a member of the MOBB. My girl, Condo P, writes back to back 15, 17 to 15 wins. Thinking of Mrs. T and the twins, and of course you. Prayers up for a safe de- uh, delivery and healthy twins. Thank you so much, Condo P. Really do appreciate you. How rare is that? When's the last time a team's done that? Back to back 17. First of all, 17 to 15 isn't a common score in this league, right? So that's that's rare in itself that a team wins a game 17 to 15. Uh, but to do it back to back weeks, is insane and for the second straight week a two-point conversion has saved us so last week two-point conversion saved us to to hold on 17 15 two-point conversion saved us this week as the raiders were unable to convert and we ended up winning by those same two points so i can't uh, i can't begin to explain to you how big two-point uh conversion defense has been for this team and they've gotten it done the last two weeks and that's why uh, we're talking about two victories instead of two losses or, or a win and a loss. So huge there. Thank you for the super chat, Condo P. Uh, Robert Mitchell, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. And, and one more thing, Condo P. Um, I, saw, I saw you tweeting about uh, Candle Day. Sucks that you didn't get your pineapple candle and, and some of the other ones that you wanted. But uh, at least you got something, right? Right. Anyway, I digress. Robert Mitchell, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Thank you for being a member of the MOBB who writes, the defense stepped up and played their asses off. They did. 
for the second week, we leaned heavily on the defense. You know, honestly, this entire win streak, the defense has been the catalyst. I mean, you know, obviously the Buccaneers game, we scored 29. and the Panthers game, we scored 27. So those were games where the offense was a little bit more, um, you know, willing to shoulder their load, uh, you know, end of the, the burden, uh, you know, so to speak. But uh, the last two weeks, the offense has essentially went into ball control, conservative mode. Let's not lose it. The defense is playing well, and the defense has had to literally carry us the last two weeks in particular. Um, and they've gotten big stops in other games like Tampa and Carolina, obviously. But these last two weeks, without the defense, we, we don't win either one of those games. And we're playing some of our best defense. And look, let's not act like the Raiders didn't miss some things. Like Derek Carr didn't miss some throws. Like he didn't see – like guys weren't open and – he didn't see him. Deshaun Jackson open on one play. Zay Jones open for a touchdown on another play. But I, that's not our problem. You know, he didn't make those throws. He didn't make those decisions. And we'll take advantage of every opportunity that is given to us. And uh, that's the thing I can say is we've taken advantage of every opportunity that's been bestowed upon us during this four-game win streak. Thank you for the super chat. Chilled dude. Thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Thank you for being a member of the MLBB Rights. Lou, so happy for you and the fam. Safe and healthy, nail biter, football. Yes, it was. We want Dallas. Lou, you're amazing. I love your content. Love the mob squad. Height. Yes, sir. Chill, dude. All of those sentiments are reciprocated. Thank you for being a member of the mob. Thank you for being a member of the Louis T Network. And thank you for. Uh, being a part of this momentous four-game win streak. You've been there every part of the way, uh, every step of the way uh, in the comment section, and uh, it was a big one. And, um, yes, we do want Dallas. Hopefully we get some guys back. We're probably going to lose Logan Thomas. But hopefully we get Ricky Seals-Jones back. And we, should, we at this point now we're tagging guys in and out, in and out. So hopefully we get J.D. McKissick back. Hopefully we get Landon Collins back. Um, you know, hopefully we get – our center back, Keith Ishmael, wasn't bad, but he had a holding penalty late in the game. I think we ultimately overcame that because the Raiders didn't have a 15-yard um, penalty outside of the tackle box going low. But um, Keith Ishmael held it down with his first career NFL start. Uh, but I'd love to get Tyler Larson back in there if at all possible. He had a big um, you know, snap that was high on the third down where he got picked off. So I'd love to have Tyler Larson back in there if at all possible next week. We'll see what happens. Um, the great Watubi. Thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. I um, think this is your second one. Uh, double up. Uh, uh, thank you for doubling up. Great Watubi. Greatly appreciate you who writes, should have come to one of my hospitals. I am the IT director for a healthcare chain. We have good public internet. LOL. <laughs> That's good information to know the next time that we have one of these situations. Obviously, we didn't know when this was going to take place or when it was going to happen but um <laughs> that's good to know for future references great watubi thank you for the super chat um red wing zero one thank you for the super chat greatly appreciate you right congrats on the twins lou uh, thank you once again matt ionitis finally got a monster sack and man it was satisfying yes yes it was i thought matt played his butt off tonight man i mean matt was all over the field and uh, I thought he made play after play after play after play during the course of this game. So um, I, I, it was good to see him do the things that he did in this game. And um, I hope to see him continue to do what he did in this game because he's playing extraordinary ball. And um, I, I want to see um, him get back to where he was pre-injury because we, we talked about this dude being one of our better, you know, defensive linemen, if not the best defensive lineman that we had on the team interior wise. And, um, you know, it was good to see him finally bag himself a quarterback. It seems like it's been ages since he's done. So uh, hopefully this is the start of him really kicking it into high gear down the stretch of this season. So, and it'd be nice to get Montez Sweat back next week as well. I think he's eligible to come off of the IR list next week. We'll see where he sits. I, I think he might miss another game. And then against Philadelphia the following week, he may be ready to rock and roll. We'll see. Uh, my guy, JP, thank you for the super chat. Uh, double up. Uh, uh, thank you for doubling up, JP, who writes, four out of five wins since I started wearing the Gibson salute to service jersey on game days. Not superstitious at all, but it's working. I told you guys, I wish I would have brought my hat 
Um, but ever since I've been wearing that hat on Fridays to preview the game, the, the uh, drip that my guy Tony P56 blessed me with, um, I always wear it every Friday when I do my keys to victory. And usually I wear it on the uh, post-game show, but obviously circumstances didn't allow that today. <clears throat> um, but I'm going to continue to wear it on the, on the, the Friday show, and uh, we'll see where it goes. But anybody else out there that's been doing something during this win streak, keep it, keep it going. Keep it going. Don't stop now. Aubrey44, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you, Aubrey. Right. Congrats on the twins, G. Hale. Appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. Really do appreciate um, the support. And um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jeremy Gerhardt. Thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Thank you for being a member of the MOBB. My guy, Jeremy, writes, always love listening to you, Lou. I'm curious what you think our biggest win has been the last four weeks. Hashtag we want Dallas. It's not even close. It's not up for debate. It's the Tampa Bay win. It's the most credible win anybody in the division has this season. Dallas doesn't have a better win on their you know, docket, um, nor does Philadelphia, nor the Giants. It's the biggest win anybody in the division has. It's the biggest win we have of the season. And it's what sparked all of this. Without that Tampa Bay win, we're not here on a six-game win streak. That win told the players that if you all play together and you do it the right way, we can beat anybody. And they've gone with that mantra and that mindset the last four weeks, and it's turned things around. So without a doubt, it's the Tampa Bay win. Again, we don't win that game. We're not here. We're not talking about six and six. We're not talking about uh, a chance to win the division and, and getting after Dallas. We're not talking about any of that without the win against the Buccaneers. So without a doubt, it's the Buccaneers win. Craig Harrison, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Craig, thank you for the love, man. Really do truly appreciate you. Thank you for your generosity and the massive dono. Craig Harrison writes, for the kids, my man, really do appreciate that. He says, committed to the team and the folks who enjoy this banter and convos. Um, Heineke seems to get it done when he has to. And this D are dogs and resilient. We got a shot, and I mean a shot at the whole damn thing. And I feel the same way. Like they better not let us in this thing. That's all I all I know. Whether it's a wild card or we're we we claim what we feel like is rightfully ours, which is the division. I don't really care how we get in. They just they better not let us in. Because if we get in there, it's we're gonna be a problem. Okay, we're gonna be a problem. And like I said, it's wide open this year. Nobody scares me. Arizona, Green Bay, Tampa Bay, Dallas. The Rams, nobody scares me. So if we get in, we got a shot. And to your point about Heineke, this is what everybody talked about with Kirk Cousins. He doesn't get it done in crucial situations. Well, Heineke seems to always get it done in these situations. He's got four game-winning drives this season. And every time we've been in those situations, he's come up clutch. Carolina, game-winning drive to take the lead. Uh, the Atlanta game, obviously, game-winning drive to take the lead. Giants game, obviously, game-winning drive to take the lead. And now today. So he's done it for us every single time we put him in that situation. He's come up huge for us. And um, I, I think that's what a lot of people couldn't stand about Kirk Cousins. Well, Heineke is delivering in those most crucial situations. He could have thrown a pick. He could have been like Kirk Cousins. He got lucky. But sometimes luck is a part of the game. And, again, we were able to take full advantage of it. Um, that's why Ron gets paid the big bucks because I would have gone for it on that fourth down. I wouldn't have allowed Derek Carr the opportunity to have the football with a chance to get in the field goal range, but he decided to kick the 48 yarder. Brian Johnson made him right. And, uh, that's why it's Ron's plan. Ron's plan. Thank you for the super chat. Once again, Craig Harrison, and, and really do appreciate you. My wife, thanks you twin D and all of you with the major donations. My wife says, thank you. Lorenzo Simpson, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Thank you for being a member of the MOBB. My guy, Zoe, writes, I bet my, he says, I bet my to grow my receding hair in exchange to shave a Rick Ross looking Raiders fan clean shaven. Let's go. Um, that's a good bet because um, you were, you were bald in anyway, right? So what difference does it make? You you were betting something that you probably were, were going to chop off anyway for a guy that probably looks like James Harden without his beard. That's going to be rough. So good bet. You win. That's going to be fun to see. Rashad Coker. I want to check on the Steelers game real quick. Um, 
because they were up late in that ball game against the Ravens, and they held on. Uh, maybe the Ravens went for two, or Justin Tucker doesn't miss extra points. So the Ravens must have gone for two, didn't get it, and the Steelers hold on for a 20-19 to victory there. Um, that's amazing. So a lot of crazy games in, in this weekend in football. And uh, add ours to the list of those games. But Rashad Coker, thank you for the super chat. Writes said it last week, saying it again. Why not us? Why not Rashad? Say it again a little bit louder for those in the back that are hard of hearing. Why not us? Why not us? I've been saying that since week. What was it? Week eleven after we beat Tampa and then we beat Carolina. And I told you I was going to start talking crazy if we beat Carolina and we did. I said, why not us? And I was laying out all these scenarios. I said, who's afraid? Who are we afraid of in the NFC? I mean, Arizona is the one team I look at and I say, we really don't want the smoke. But I'm not, I'm not afraid. If that's who we were to draw, okay, bring them on. Bring them on. But I'm not afraid of anybody. I'm not afraid of any team. I think we, we can, if we get in, we can do some damage. Especially if Montez Sweat comes back. And he starts getting after the quarterback because that's the missing piece. Now, defensively, the one thing that we could say, and, and, and look, you could be one of these staunch, oh, the defense is better without those guys type of people. You got to admit today, Derek Carr had all day to throw the football. We need someone off the edge. And, and Tez could be that guy if he comes back and he's playing team ball. He could be that guy off the edge for sure. Metaphor, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Thank you for being a member of the MOBB who writes new twin names, Logan and Taylor, hashtag HTT mob. Um, nah, <laughs> nah, not Logan and Taylor. Um, but we are having a boy and a girl, in case I haven't told you guys that already. I think I did. That's why you said Logan and Taylor. But Taylor could be a boy name, too. Obviously, Taylor Heineke, so whatever. Anyway, uh, Mal uh, Meliqui Jimenez, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you who writes... The way Josh Johnson ran it on us concerns me. Um, you mean uh, Joshua Jacobs. Uh, he says, but Deron Payne, man, the man is so underrated for what he does in the run game. He was huge. Um, and, and Josh had a couple of good hits, but he didn't run it all over us. It's not like he ran for 100 yards or something in this game. He had a couple of good hits. Those happen from time to time. I venture to say that he didn't have more than 60 yards rushing in this game. Um, because for the most part, we stuffed the run in this game. I'm, I'm going to check. You got me curious now. I'm going to say, without even looking, Josh Jacobs had 15 carries for 59 yards in this game. 13 carries, 52 yards. He didn't kill us. That's four yards a pop, right? I mean, it's not great that we gave up four yards a pop, but he had two good hits. You know, other than that, I thought we were pretty solid against the run. I didn't have any issues with our run defense in this game. So that isn't really concerning for me. But to your point, Deron Payne, when the faucet was shut off, it was 94, nine times out of 10 in this game, shutting down the run. He is huge for us in the run game. You know, most people only like to look at sacks and determine if a guy's playing well or not based off of sacks. Well, Deron Payne, he's not a sack guy. It never was, which is why I was against drafting him. However, he is a dominant run defender. We've said that before. I'll say it again. He showed it again today. You okay, babe? Hey, hey, you all right? Yeah. Craig Harrison, thank you for the super chat. Uh, double up. Uh, uh. Thank you for doubling up. Greatly appreciate you. My guy, Craig Harrison, writes, and what the F, man, call the Washington, call this team the Washington Killers. They're trying to kill us fans. <laughs> Flipping heart attacks after game after game. Yeah, I mean... I can tell you that I was really going through it here in the hospital, you know, because obviously I got my wife here and I'm trying to make sure she's okay. And I'm watching the TV and I'm trying to keep engaging with the mob members and, you know, the food gets here. I got to go down there. I didn't even see the Raiders touchdown. Like I, I came back and I, the first thing I yelled at my wife when I come through the door, cause I can't see the TV. Did they get the two point conversion? Cause when I left, they had a penalty in the end zone. I'm like, they're going to score. So I just went and got the food. So I come back up, and I knew they had scored. Like, we were not keeping them out of the end zone at the one-yard line. So I imagine that they ran it in. But I, I said, did they get the two? That's all I cared about. Because if we stop them on the two-point conversion, it's not a tie game. We're going to win by those two points. That was what I was saying in my mind. Or I was saying, maybe we go down, score a touchdown, score, get the extra point, and we go up nine. And that's the, that's the clincher. Because remember, 
you know, every game we feel like now we're going to have the ball with about 10 minutes to go in the fourth, and we're going to put together this lengthy drive. And we were on our way to doing that, and then the interception happened. But, um, man, this team does it to us every week. But as long as they're winning, they're good heart attacks, okay? It's only when you lose that it becomes a problem. So hold on a second. Okay. All right. Um, so yes, because we're winning, it's okay. I, I can take it. Thank you for the super chat, Craig Harrison. Um, got another super chat here from K80 Tick. Thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Thank you for being a member of the MOBB who writes, Four in a row, baby. Hope family is all well. I'm sitting home with COVID running around the house, LOL. You need to get well, okay? You need to get better. But um, I can tell you this. Um, I have, I've never had COVID. Don't want it, okay? Don't need it. However, I'd imagine, you know, things are eased just a bit with a win. Every, I've already said this. I've said this many times. Food tastes better. Drinks taste better. Air tastes crisper. Everything's better. Sleep is much more peaceful and serene. And I imagine COVID is less painful and nerve-wracking with a win. Everything's better with a win. Just like everything tastes better at ranch. Everything's better with a win. Get, get well soon, K80 Tick. Get well soon, man. Um, metaphor. Thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Uh, double up. Uh, uh, who writes? healthcare.gov site down due to high traffic in DMV. Um, again, don't know what that means. That one probably went right over my head, but I'm still here. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Jason Rogers. Thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. My guy, Uncle Jay. Uh, double up. Uh, uh, thank you for the double up. Who writes? I tagged you in one and a half other victory letters on IG. I tagged you. I know you're busy. Check it out when you can. I will definitely do that. Thank you for tagging me, and I will check it out. My IG has been crazy lately, so um, might have got lost in the sauce, but I will definitely. I've got time. I got number time now, so I will definitely check that out. Um, Adrian Hernandez, thank you for the double up. Uh, double up. Uh, uh. Really do appreciate you, my guy. A. Hernandez writes, the excitement of the season is reminding me of 2012. I'm not saying, but I'm saying this is our division until it isn't. I, a lot of people keep trying to reference th this season and last year as them being uh, comparable. And I guess, you know, obviously because Ron was here last year and, you know, it was a late season push just like it. I think it's more 2012-ish. Honestly, because that was a year where we didn't we didn't lose any more regular season games. We came back after starting the season three and six. We won seven straight, won the division. I feel I feel those types of vibes. And remember, going into that postseason, we felt dangerous. Like we thought we could beat anybody. I don't think we would have beaten the 49ers that year, but I would have loved to have had an opportunity because I knew we could beat Atlanta. We would have beaten them if Robert didn't get hurt. In that game, remember, he got hurt trying to slide, caught a concussion right by the sidelines, and Kirk came in through a late pick in that game, and we lost. But I felt like we could beat Atlanta, even though they were a really good team that year. We could have gone to Atlanta and won. I don't think we would have been able to go to San Francisco and beat them. But this this feel, I felt like we had a chance that year. I feel the same way this year. I, I didn't feel that way last year. Last year, it was just good to be there. We were just happy to be there. We weren't supposed to be there. It's the first year, Ron, brand new. St we, we had 18 different quarterbacks. We weren't supposed to be there last year. We're just happy to be there. This year, we're not just happy to be there. We're looking to do damage when we get there. This feels more like 12 than it does 20. I agree with you on that, Adrian Hernandez. And like you said, until it's not our division, it is our division. Do something about it. The Martin family, thank you. For the Super Chat, greatly appreciate you. The Martin family writes, first off, congrats, Lou. Thank you. Second, I know you're in a hospital, so this will be PG. Brian Effin Johnson. We want Dallas. Brian Effin Johnson is correct. Okay. I had my doubts about this dude. This is the thing. He hasn't missed a field goal all season. The thing I was nervous about were the extra points because he's missed three extra points this year. And those extra, the first extra point that he made 
that didn't look that clean, okay? It came out low. It, it, it started to hook. It was nerve-wracking, but it went through. The second one, um, yeah, yeah, but um, that field goal had me nervous because it started out like it wanted to go wide, but then it, then it straightened up, but then it started to tail late, and it edged in there, and I'm like, yeah! Me and my wife were on pins and needles watching that thing find its way inside that right upright. Man, Brian F. And Johnson is right, and you're right. You're damn right. We want Dallas. Bring them on. Bring on those dirty, dick dastardly Dallas Cowboys. I'm ready. Jeff Antonio, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. My guy, Jeff, writes, hey, Lou, what's up, Jeff? We fought and got a tough dub. Hell yes. For the Cowboys, we're going to have to score more than today. I agree, Jeff. What can our offense do to beat the Cowgirls? I mean, honestly, I think the biggest thing that we have to do is we, first of all, have to stay out of our own way. We can't have penalties. We're going to have to protect better. This wasn't good enough today. I thought there were times last week where the protection wasn't all that great, especially early in the game against Seattle. I thought the protection was spotty. Uh, Taylor was was pressured. Um, you know, by Max Crosby, there was problems on that right side, you know. Max Crosby got to him several times in the game. And so we're going to have to be better. You know what I mean? Uh, and then that, that interception, that was a tip. You know, that wasn't just, you know, Taylor's, you know, just you know, having a bad pass. That ball was tipped. So his arm was hit, I should say. So we have to protect better, number one. You know, And then the next thing we're going to have to do is the Cowboys play a lot of man-to-man. -man. Like, they're, they, they trust their guys. We're going to have to attack their secondary. We can't be afraid. We already know the weak link in that secondary is Anthony Brown. Like everyone knows it. So we got to attack him, you know, and, and don't be afraid to go after Trayvon Diggs. He can get the smoke too. If he wants it, he can get it. So we got to be able to attack their secondary. But the first thing we got to do is be able to protect. If we can do that up front, I think we can really take advantage of some man to man situations. And we got to hit some big plays, man. Everything has been so hard the last four weeks, specifically these last two weeks. Everything's been nickel and dime city. Like, we've got to – everything can't be a screen. You know, we got to be able to take some shots down the field. So, um, it, it, we haven't taken – I don't think we've taken some real shots. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Sorry about that. Um, we we got we to gotta take some shots. We haven't taken any shots since the Carolina. So we, we take some shots down the field. I think that's going to be huge. So that's the thing. But we got to keep playing the same kind of defense we've been playing. Red Wings 01. Thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Uh, double up. Uh, uh. Who writes, Winfro was cutting us up all day. But then Scott was all like, you ain't the only one with a shifty white dude. <laughs> <laughs> and Humphreys went super saiyan. I swear he's the most clutch player I've ever seen. I told you guys you were going to love Adam Humphreys because of what he does in crucial situations. Um, I, I feel like he needs to get the football more. It shouldn't just be third downs or late game situations where he gets the football. This guy's clutch. He needs more opportunities. Remember early in the season, I was telling you guys, he's always open on the football. Like, why do we have to wait until, you know, third and whatever or – Fourth quarter, got to have it to throw him the football. Like, he's got to be better. We got to get him more opportunities. But that said, I told you guys it was third and win for right? And it seemed like we didn't get that memo early in the game. They got it a little bit later on. You know, he stopped hurting us in the second half. But in the first half, it was third and win for and we seemed to not have an answer for that. So, uh, But like you said, they weren't the only guy, the team with a white, you know, shifty white slot receiver, right? We got our own uh, version of that. So it was good to see him step up in some crucial situations for sure. Um, thank you for that super chat, Red Wings 01. Trevor Patch, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Uh, double up. Uh, uh, thank you for doubling up, Trevor Patch, who writes, Missed Collins, y'all tripping, was a Bostic game. Now, Landon has been playing really good underneath, and we missed a lot of tackles, something Landon has not done. So uh, we did miss Landon today, but I thought the safeties overall played well. 
you know, Bobby was huge in this game. And I thought Shades was physical, as always. That's, not, that's never been the discussion with Shades. It's never been about his physicality or lack thereof. His problem is in coverage as a cover guy. He gets there early, and instead of him attacking the football, he attacks the player and picks up penalties. But Shades always plays with a reckless abandon that we love. Um, he almost injured his own teammate today. But, you know, and, and that's why he never can last a full 16 games or 17 now because he's always playing with his hair on fire and hitting anything that moves. But uh, I thought it was a really good game by both of the safeties. So, um, but I definitely would love to have Landon Collins back underneath. We missed a ton of tackles, too much yards after contact um, and yards after the catch today. We need to clean that up next week against Dallas for sure. Mr. Ron B, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Who writes, messed up my original message, but the NFC East crown is now in play. Time to defend our title. Bring on Dallas. Absolutely. And and I've, I've been saying this for, you know, the last couple of weeks. You know, there's still fans that don't think we're in this thing. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, if we beat the Vegas Raiders on Sunday. We're six and six. We got two games against Dallas. They're up two games. We got everything we need. Like, don't think Dallas isn't going to lose any more games, especially, you know, outside of you know, the division. They could lose to somebody else in the division, not named Washington, but they also still have Arizona on the schedule too. So, um, I, I, Dallas is going to slip up again, and it doesn't necessarily have to be to us. But we need to take care of our business, right? So, um, we get our first crack at them next week. If we want the division, if we're serious about making a run at the division, we need to beat them next week. It's that simple. But you're absolutely right. The division is in play. Bring on Dallas. Let's do it. Dewan Porch, thank you for the super chat. We greatly appreciate you. Thank you for being a member of the MOB. My guy Dewan writes, 10 for the twins and the win. Double up. Uh, double up. Uh, uh. Sending prayers and a hail to you and the fam. Hail to victory. Indeed. Thank you so much for the donation. And um, thank you for being a member of the MOB. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, hail to victory. Indeed. Um, you know what else I want to say? Um, my guy, uh, Josh Z. Shout out to Josh Z for sending me um, a couple of messages on IG of a bunch of Washington fans out in Vegas having a good time. And, and you know, you know how they have the little parties on, on the road. That one was significant because it was our first time out to Vegas since the Raiders moved. And um, that pack, that stadium was packed with Washington fans. It was loud. You could hear it through the television. OK, so they went out and they represented. So they represented in a major way. And I'm going to tell you right now, we need that same representation at home next week. We need to hold it down. So uh, thank you for the super chat, Dewan Porch. Atlas Zero 13, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Thank you for being a member of the MOBB rights. Shout out to the O-Line and Eric Flowers. Don't care if you're from Oakland or Las Vegas, hands off number four. Shout out to Eric Flowers for gutting it out. You know, the last thing we could have used tonight was another inexperienced offensive lineman next to you know, our first time starting center, you know what I mean? So Flowers, and I told you, Ron pretty much challenged him when he said, oh, it, it's a it's a pain tolerance thing. He can play. It's an injury you can play through. That told me everything I needed to know. When a coach pretty much says that, he's challenging you, he's challenging your manhood. Are you tough enough to play through this or not? You know, it's one thing if you can play and, or you can't play, it's too significant of an injury. It's another thing if the team doc says, yo, he can go with this. You know, it might be a little painful, but he can go. Well, Ron's like, all right, you're a football player, go. So shout out to Eric Flowers for gutting it out, man, and giving us everything he had. And uh, the O-line wasn't great all night, but they were good enough. They were good enough, and we got the job done. And, uh, yeah, they, they horse collared and wrangled up our guy a couple of times, and, and Eric Flowers wasn't having it. And I, I had to tell a couple of the fellas, like, Logan, hey, go get him. Go get Eric, man. Eric about to go tear somebody's head off. Go get him or he pick up a 15 yard penalty, bring him back. OK, so Logan had to go retrieve him and um, it could have got ugly because he was steaming. He was hot. That man was not trying to hear nothing. Nobody was talking about at that point. So I love it. One more of it. Um, Jared Fromm, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Jared writes, Lou, 
Fitting that we won two games by two points back to back. Twins, you say? <laughs> I like the uh, I like the synchronicity there. Uh, I like I like that. He says, in honor of your twins. Yeah, may, maybe. Yeah, I, I didn't think of it that way, but you know what? Now that you say that, maybe maybe that was a little bit of a, a fate there and, and some synchronicity, if you will. So, I'll take it any way I can get it. Um, if we had to do it a third time, even though I'm not having triplets, I'd, I'd love to see it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I just want to win, no matter what. So uh, maybe maybe that was, um, you know, maybe that was the man upstairs saying, I'm, I'm going to toss you this little bone, man. Anyway, Trevor Patch, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. My guy, Trev writes, thought Oak 15 would come, touchdown, PNT, field goal, field goal, safety. That's an odd combination, but... Um, if I'm not mistaken, you said 1750 in, in one of your comments. Um, that is impressive. I don't know if you just said, well, they did it last week. We can do it again. But I said in the MOBB when the Raiders took the lead 15 to 14 with their field goal, I said the Raiders don't win games this way. This is not their style of play. I told you guys already for the preview of this game, they haven't won a game this season when they've scored less than 20 points. This is not their type of football game. This is not how they win games. They win games by scoring 30, 33, 34. They win games that way. We win ugly. We win 17 to 15. We win 20 to 15. These are the types of games we're capable of winning. This is not for the faint of heart. This is not for everyone. And obviously it's not for Vegas. This was for us. So I felt good when they kicked that field. Had they scored a touchdown and got to 20, I would have felt a lot less confident because then we would have needed a touchdown. They would have they would have pierced that 20 point threshold that I set and it would have put us in a much, you know, more compromising position. But the fact of the matter is we kept them out of the end zone. I talked about red zone defense. And what was the last key of the game? Red zone defense, keeping the Raiders under 20, and Brian Johnson. All of them came to fruition at the end. Thank you for the super chat, Trevor Patch. And that's one hell of a prediction, if I may say so myself. Corey Fitterman, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Thank you for being a member of the MOBB. My guy, Corey, writes, Humpty Hump came in the clutch as usual on that last drive. A do the Humpty Hump. Come on, a do the Hump. Uh uh, me, baby. A do the Humpty Hump. I do the hump, the hump. Y'all know what it is, man. I've been telling y'all about Adam Humphreys all season long. Remember early in the year, I was like, man, Humphreys is getting on my nerves. He was falling down. One thing the man don't do is he don't drop passes. And I told you, if he could ever keep his feet, because he was falling down in the preseason, he was falling down early in the year, I said, this guy is going to be money on third downs. Could you imagine if Ryan Fitzpatrick had been playing? This dude would have had a million catches this year, because he's always open. But Heineke always looks for him in those crucial situations, and he always, and I mean always, in all caps, comes through in the clutch for this team. He did it again today. He did it again, and it resulted in Brian Johnson uh, being able to line up and kick a 48-yard field goal. And shout out to Curtis Samuel for coming in. Never, ever trust a man with two first names coming in on that third down and getting those you know, three and a half yards just falling short of the first down, but making that field goal even closer because if that field goal was from 50, I think it hits that upright and we lose this game. So um, the fact that it was from 48, it squeezed in there, no problems. So shout out to Curtis Samuel for coming in there and getting a little bit of that running back work in and coming through in the clutch as well. Um, Gunny Man, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. I got Gunny Man. Thank you for being a member of the MOBB rights. Hail to the, uh, he says, hail to the dub. Congrats, Luke. Thank you. I appreciate that. You can remove no from your vocabulary now, hashtag girl dad. Well, I already have a girl, so I already know how this goes. Um, I'm not afraid to say no to my girl, but uh, it's a lot harder. I can, I can definitely say that. It's a lot harder uh, to say no. Um, girls hit different. If you're a dad, girls hit different because they'll always be your little girl. and. Um, you know, I got a, I got a damn near a teenager now, and it's still like hard for me to even fathom. My wife keeps telling me, "Look, she's not a little kid anymore. You got to start having talks with her about boys and stuff." And I'm like, "Man, I feel like you know, Will Smith and, and Martin Lawrence on Bad Boys. Like, do we got to go to the door on one of these young Thundercats? 
I don't know. But I got my boys behind me. I'm ready. Reggie comes knocking on the door. There could be some problems. Anyway, I appreciate you, Gunny Man. Thank you for the super chat. CGM87, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. My guy, CGM87, writes, Lou, guns ain't allowed in the hospital. <laughs> Honestly, I don't even have the guns. I put those away. It's not summertime, so uh, no guns allowed in the hospital. You ain't got to worry about it. I put mine away. He says, O's got to put up 24 plus to have a chance next week. I'll say it again, duck phallus. <laughs> I love your pig Latin there, uh, especially in the hospital, okay? <laughs> But 17 isn't, I don't think it'll be enough to beat Dallas. They're, they're too explosive of an offense, even though, you know, we, I saw what the Saints just did to them, you know, and, and if they didn't have a pick six in that game, what they scored? They scored 27 against the Saints, I think. Uh, I think it ended up being 27 to 17. Uh, without that, they only scored 20 in that game. And that's with four, count them, four Taysom Hill interceptions. Now, granted, um, I don't need it yet. You still need it? You don't need it. Granted, um, the Saints defense, I think, is better than ours. I'm going to keep it a buck with y'all. You know, I wouldn't lie to y'all. I don't think our defense is as good as the Saints. That said, um, if the Saints can do it, why the hell can't we? I mean, I'm not saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> so um, let's get it. Thank you for the super chat, CGM87. And if I didn't say it, uh, double up, uh, uh. Tino TV. Thank you for the super chat, Tino. Greatly appreciate you who writes, I do the hump, the hump. Come on, I do, uh, uh, do me, baby. I do the hump, the hump. Y'all know what it is. Come on, now, y'all join in now. He says, man, I love that guy. Don't we all? We all just need a little Adam in our life. Just need a little 13, man. That's it. Yes, sir. Metaphor, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you who writes, we are ahead of San Francisco. We question them in conference record. I know a lot of their losses have come in the conference, uh, but I know they've also lost some games out of conference as well. So um, I'd like to think that there aren't, first of all, I've already explained this to you guys. There aren't many teams in our conference with a better mark than us. We have an outstanding conference mark. Look, three of our six losses, four, excuse me, four of our six losses came in against AFC teams. This is the first time we've beaten the AFC team all season long. We lost to all the other three members of the AFC West, Denver, Kansas City, and the Chargers, and we lost to Buffalo. So all of our wins essentially have come against NFC opponents, except for this one. This is the first AFC team. So we're five and two in the conference. Like, like I said, we are winning the ones that count the most. And now the ones that count the absolute utmost are coming up and we got to find a way to win those as well five straight in the division they count times two conference division all of it we need it now we got to go get it we set ourselves up to play in meaningful games excuse me at the end of this season and now here we are now we got to take advantage of it. john livingston thank you for the super chat greatly appreciate you thank you for being a member of the mobb my guy jl smooth writes what up luke what up jl smooth he says been a minute it has man it has it's always good to hear from you and i'm pulling for your boys on monday and i think you're going to get it because a lot of people are disrespecting y'all like this ain't y'all division like new england just back and y'all gonna just bow down to these boys so um, I'm looking for y'all to do some dirt to these boys on Monday night. And um, you got you got a fan over here, uh, uh, an honorary fan on Monday night. I will be pulling for your boys on Monday. He says, been a minute. Congrats on the twins, my guy. I appreciate that. He says, man, I was rooting for your, your guys hard today, but Heineke doesn't make it easy sometimes. He threw the game away, and that Raiders DB will see that ball and sleep tonight. You're not lying. You're not wrong. Uh, we can say this. If it weren't for Taylor Heineke, we're not here. We're not in this position where we don't have a chance to even be talking about playoffs or winning the division or any of it. He's been huge in those moments, and he got it done again. Now, you're right. That DB, uh, Trayvon Malrick, he should have picked that off, and it, the Raiders should have won this game 20 what, – what, 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 that would have made it 22. They probably would have gone for two. No, they would have kicked the extra point, made us have to go for two. They would, 22 to 14 would have been the score after that. Um, so, yeah, he, he should have picked that off, and he will see that ball in his sleep because if he picks it off, they win the game. But the NFL, and this is sports in general, but specifically the NFL, is a fine line between winning 
and losing. And they lost the game because he didn't make a play when it was there to be made. That's not our problem. Heineke did make the plays when they were there to be made. Got away with one. We'll take it. Because like I said, when you're living right, these things go in your favor. And we're living right right now. Our house is clean. Thank you for the super chat, JL Smoke. Billy Trust, thank you for the super chat. My goodness, thank you for your generosity. Thank you for the dono, man, man. I can tell you right now, my wife says thank you so much and we're gonna need it. Pampers aren't cheap, wipes aren't cheap, okay? All of this stuff costs. And even though you know we had a baby shower, it wasn't like your traditional baby shower. COVID has really thrown a monkey wrench in everything. So we didn't get as many, you know, diapers and wipes like you would like to, especially for twins. You know what I mean? Like everything is for two. Everything is times two. You don't need one onesie. You need two onesies. You don't need one box of diapers. You need two boxes of diapers. You don't need one box of wipes. You need two boxes of wipes. So this this donation, I can't thank you enough for it. Thank you so much, Billy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And he just writes twins. Thank you. Thank you so much. Really, truly do appreciate you, Billy trust and trust and believe thank you we're grateful forever grateful thank you once again billy for that super chat and donation ishmael benitez ib thank you for the super chat greatly appreciate you and um billy if i don't know if i said this thank you for being a member of the mob truly do appreciate you billy trust um uh, IB, Ishmael Benitez, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. My guy, IB, writes, hey, man, enjoy your babies and thank you for all that you do. Wish you and your family the best big game next week. Yes, it is, Ishmael. And thank you for your generosity as well. Thank you uh, for being a member of the MOBB. And um, again, I, I tell you guys this all the time. For as much as you guys are grateful for what I do, I'm grateful for all of you because none of this exists without you guys. So uh, the, the the feeling is mutual. It's reciprocated tenfold. And just thank you to all of you guys out there. Thank you so much. My family truly does um, thank all of you. And we're indebted to you guys because you, you allow us to, to be able to do the things that we, we do. So uh, thank you guys once again. And um, next week's game is huge. It's the biggest game we've had this season. Um, It'll be, I'm a, can I keep it a buck with y'all? Can I keep it a buck? Next week's game will be the biggest game we have played here in Washington at FedEx Field since 2012, week 17 versus Dallas. There I said it. No game in 2015 equals this game. No game last year with no fans in the stands equals this game. No game we have played at FedEx Field equals the magnitude of the game coming up on Sunday versus the Cowboys since week 17, winner takes all, 2012, Alfred Morris, you know, 30 carries, 200 yards, whatever it was, 33 carries, 200 yards, three touchdowns. This, is, this, this game is that big. So without a doubt, this is a massive game. And um, I want it bad. I, I, I want. It, I truly want this bad. We've had Dak Prescott issues. The, the Cowboys, Troy, man, everybody's still doing. Do you know Pam Oliver called Taylor Heineke Heineken three times before the game started? Not once did she catch herself or correct herself or anything. Like the disrespect is real. Okay, like they still think we're a joke. We'll see who's laughing after next week who's laughing at the end of the season but i love it i love the position that we're in right now um because we still get to play the underdog card you know what i'm saying so i love it robert mitchell thank you for the super chat greatly appreciate you uh double up uh, uh. thank you for doubling up greatly appreciate you my guy robert mitchell writes jamin davis hashtag hidden gym first of all he's not a hidden gym we spent the first round pick on this dude, okay <laughs> So there's nothing hidden gym ish about Jamin Davis. We need him to play like he played today, flying around. Now, again, he missed some tackles, but the man was flying around the football field. And that is exactly why we drafted him 17th overall, or 19th, excuse me, overall, to fly around the football field 
and make plays like the one he did on the screen against our old buddy, old pal, Peyton Barber. That's why we drafted Jamin Davis, and he played huge today. Love to see it. He's growing in confidence every single week. He's he's gaining more and more understanding of what needs to be done, and he's doing it. So I love it. You, you can't call a first-round pick a hidden gem. We call Cam Curl a seventh-round pick a hidden gem, right? Jamin Davis is supposed to be doing this, and now he is, and I'm happy to see him doing what he's doing. I'd like to see him blitz more, to be honest with you. Metaphor, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Um, my guy, Metaphor, writes, hey, Luke, hospital probably has a Salvation Army drop box. Um, they may, they may, they may not. I'm, I'm staying in a, a, a Nova, so I don't, I don't think they have one. They may, uh, but I don't need, I, like, a, I'm not giving away my, my blacks, okay, like you did. <laughs> okay, I can't afford to do it. Can I let you guys in on a little secret? I didn't want to tell you guys this because I didn't want to jinx it. And if we had lost, you would have been blaming me. And I would have taken I would have taken it on the chin. I was going to tell you this story, whether we won or lost. But we won, so I feel even more confident telling you this story. Um, I went in the closet um, before my Friday show because I had on Raiders colors when I was going to do the show. And I was like, I, this just doesn't feel right. So I took off the Raiders colors that I had on. It was something similar to the getup that I have on right now. And I just had on a Washington hat. And I said, no, nah, this feels kind of Raider-ish. I need to take this off. So I go to the closet to go get uh, my Ron's plan Washington shirt, uh, burgundy one. And I pull it off the hanger, but it comes off halfway. So one part of the shirt is on the hanger. The other side is still on the hanger. But it's stuck in between a bunch of shirts. So I, I need to reach in to grab the other end to pull it out. And what I pull out was my black dressed in all black like the Omen Washington shirt. And I quickly like put it down like, oh, get it off of me. <laughs> like, I don't even want to see it. I don't want to touch it. And I, I, you know, I stuffed it back and I don't even think I put it on a hanger correctly. And I pull out the, the Ron's playing shirt that I had intended to grab. And I said, I hope that's not a bad Omen. That did not feel good. But as it turned out, one, it wasn't a bad omen, but I just wanted to come clean because I felt guilty. And had we lost, I would have felt like I was responsible. So maybe I do need to give my all my blacks away so I don't have them in the way. But I, obviously, at some point, maybe we won't, you know, but at some point, you're probably going to need them again. So I can't afford to do that. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> uh, Chauncey Davis, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. My guy, Chauncey, the OG, the old chisel. Thank you for being a member of the MOBB rights. Breathe, relax, and enjoy one game at a time. Y'all listen when the OG speaks, okay? The man has said this for four weeks straight, and he's been right every single week. And even in the MOBB, when we start freaking out, when the Raiders kick their field goal to take the lead, the OG said, y'all breathe, relax. We good. <laughs> and, and I felt confident, though. I said, we, we got this. The only part that I didn't feel confident in, and, and the MOBB numbers will attest to this, is when we kicked the field goal, and there was still 43 seconds left. I think it was 43. It might have been 37 or something like that. It was 37 because we kicked it off. And this is the beauty of Brian Johnson not having a big leg on kickoffs. He forced them to waste six seconds on the return with Peyton Barber. So that made it 31 seconds. So it was it was it was beautiful that he, we were able to waste off that much clock. Um, but I wasn't confident that we they still had a timeout. I was not confident. I'm and I'm glad that Ron ran it on third and four because it forced the Raiders to call their second timeout. So they only had one timeout remaining. So it put us in an advantageous spot. But I was still nervous. Because I'm like, Derek Carr, he can get chunks on this defense. And he tried to get us all, he tried to get it all back in one play. That one throw the, with Bobby McCain down there in coverage, you, you can't tell me, if you're a fan out there, all right, you can't tell me your heart wasn't literally in your damn throat or at the bottom of your feet when that ball was in the air and Bobby McCain is in coverage one on one by his damn self. You can't tell me that you weren't a nervous wreck. And even after that ball was incomplete, that you weren't nervous. My first initial reaction, as soon as that ball was incomplete, my eyes went right to that official that was trailing on the plate. I said, don't you reach. Don't you reach. 
And he's like, nah, I ain't reaching. I said, back judge, don't you reach. I can't see you, but I don't want to see no yellow. Line up. And then I heard the commentary, no flags on the play. I'm like, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah, won't he do? So, man, that was scary. That was the only time that I wavered in confidence. I was like, they're going to get this field goal. And their kicker is a beast. So I was like, if they get anywhere, if they, this is a 60-yarder. He can make it. He's got the leg. He made a 56-yarder against Dallas last week. Like, this guy is perfectly capable of breaking our hearts. So I'm glad it never got to that. I'm glad that Cam Curl was able to make the tackle inbounds, force them to use their final timeout, and put us in a position to pretty much make them have to attempt a Hail Mary. So um, it all worked out. And as the OG likes to say, breathe, relax, and enjoy one game at a time. Thank you, CD. Thank you, OG. William Lee, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you, my guy, William Lee. Uh, double up. Uh, uh, thank you for doubling up, William Lee. Who writes, Lou, it seems that the offense is more stagnant with Logan back. First down, Gibby. Second down, Gibby. Third down, Logan. All game, Terry was phased out. I don't think it's a Logan issue as much as it is and has been a philosophical approach in terms of the opponents we've been playing. I think they felt like, you know, and, and I, I shouldn't say that because the Raiders were perfectly capable of scoring 30 some odd points, but I think it's just the way the game has gone. Um, they, they feel like their best chance to win with the way we're set up right now is to win time of possession, keep the score low, and you know, try to eliminate mistakes. We still made one today, almost made a second, but they think that's our best way of, of winning games, and it's worked. If it's not broken, don't fix it. They're going to have to open it up next week, and I think we'll see a much more – and we'll get a lot more zone uh, man-to-man next week. It's so much easier to be dynamic against man-to-man coverage because you can run pick plays and you can run different you know, routes and things of that nature. I think we'll see a much more aggressive approach offensively next week against Dallas man-to-man coverage. But, you know, if they want a tendency break, next week is a perfect time to do it because we'll be looking for man-to-man. And if we get it, I, we need to eat it up. Yum, yum, eat them up. Yum, yum, eat them up. But if we don't, um, it could be another one of these grinded out type of ball games. I don't really care how it happens. I just need it to happen. But to your point, um, we're going to have to score more next week. And I, I don't think it's a Logan Thomas back issue. You know, like I don't, I don't put that on Logan. Like, oh, since Logan is back, we can just. I, I think it's just the way these games have gone, the score being low, the you know, the, the possessions not being as, as you know, plentiful, and you know, just having opportunities for us to win these games, seventeen to fifteen. They just took advantage of it. Seattle, specifically last week, Seattle struggles to score. And what did I tell you about Vegas? They haven't won a game this season all long, all season long when they've scored less than 20 points. So I think the mindset in both of those games is, hey, we keep the score low, we're going to win. Because Seattle can't score, and, and the Raiders, they don't win when they don't score. When Derek Carr doesn't throw for 300 yards, they don't win. I don't think he threw for 300. I think he fell short of 300, barely, but I think he fell short. 249 for Derek Carr. They're, they're 0-7 this season when he doesn't throw for 300 yards. And they're 0-7 when they don't score – you know, 20 points or, or more. So, um, I mean, again, you see what it is. You see what the formula is. So I think that's kind of what went into the last two weeks. But I could be wrong about that. I don't think it's a Logan Thomas issue, though. So anyway, I digress. Robert Mitchell, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. My guy, Robert, writes, sixth seed, Lou. Robert, succeed. Yeah, um, I think my guy, Metaphor, already told us that we're the sixth seed um, because our conference record is much better than San Francisco's. And they lost to Seattle today. So that's another loss in the conference for the um, 49ers. I knew they were going to lose to Seattle. Seattle, that's why our win last week was so impressive. Look how many points they put up. Now, that's family business. So you know how that goes. You know, you, you throw the records out the window. See what the Lions did to the Minnesota today. When it's family business, you throw the records out the window because they don't matter. I know you, you know me, and who's going to out-execute the other? That's what it all boils down to. But same thing being said, this was a Seattle Seahawks team that couldn't score any points. You need help? 
Is the massage on? No. Oh, sorry. Why you ain't tell me that? <laughs> um, anyway, um, we got the six C, and again, it's really insignificant if we're, we're being honest with one another because you lose next week. You're not the six seed. You're not the seventh seed potentially. You're not anything. But the beauty is, the, the I told you the Vikings. I'm not worried about them because they're going to lose games. I told you they're capable of beating anybody. They're going to lose the, you know. So the beauty of what happened today, right, is that everybody except for Philadelphia, the Saints lost, the eight, the um, the Forty Niners lost, the um, Vikings lost. All the teams that were right there, the Bears lost. All the teams that were trying to, you know, hang around that are hovering, they lost. They they lost ground today or this week with the Saints losing. So. Um, we're in a great spot, you know what I'm saying? And the, the Eagles are right there, but we played them twice. So again, I'm not worried about anybody. We control the outcome of our season. If we don't get it done against the Eagles and the Cowboys, then we deserve our fate. But we've positioned ourselves to where if you want in, you just gotta win. It's simple. I don't expect us to win out. I want to win out, but I don't expect us to win out. But I, there's no reason we shouldn't be able to beat Philadelphia in Philadelphia and at Washington. We should sweep them. No reason we shouldn't sweep the Giants. No reason that we can't split with Dallas at, at bare minimum. There's no reason for that. So the way I see it, the sixth seed, that's bare minimum. I feel like there's no reason for us to be the seventh seed. We're better than the 49ers. We're better than the Vikings. We're better than the Saints. We're better than any of these teams, even though we lost to the Saints. The Falcons lost today, right? So they were close and hovering around. We're not worried about anybody but ourselves. That six seed, that's there. If we don't win the division, that should be there for us. But I'm greedy. I want the I want the, the, the Rams are tripping. They slipping and tripping. If they don't want five, I'll take it. That'll give us a chance to beat Dallas. If, if we don't win the division, Dallas will be the four, more likely than not, the, the fourth uh division winner. They'll be the four seed. I would love to go to Dallas if we can't get them the division and knock them out in the first round of the playoffs. If 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 the Rams want the fifth seed, I'll take the six. And I'll go to the third team. And if that third team is Tampa Bay, if that third team is Green Bay, I don't mind. We've already beaten those teams or played that those teams already this season. We're not afraid. So the team I don't want is Arizona. You want to avoid Arizona? Don't be the seventh seed. We're going to get the sixth seed. We're going to get the sixth seed. That's bare minimum. I, I'm greedy. I want the five or I want the four. Warren Jackson. Thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Thank you for being uh, a member of the MOBB who writes. What's up, Lou? What's up, Warren? Feels good. Feels good. Greatly appreciate you. Hold on one second, guys. Let me go help my wife. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that, guys. Duty calls. Wife comes first, right? So, um, feels good. Feels good. You're damn right it does. 
Absolutely. Thank you for the super chat, Warren Jackson. Feels good. Feels good. Four in a row always feels. It feels good. Yeah. It feels good. You know it does. Sure feels good to me. Anyway. Mark Matthews, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you, my guy, Double M. Writes. Hey, Louie. How many yards did Gibson have? I, I can knock that out for you real quick. Gibby had 88 yards on 23 carries. And we thought this was going to be another hundo piece for him because at halftime, he already had 60 yards. So this seemed like he was trending towards the Raiders got to give him credit. In the second half, they really got better in their run defense. Uh, I didn't love some of the runs. Too many, for me, outside runs. I, I felt like we were gashing them up the middle. Um, I thought that it was too many runs to the outside. One slow developing. Remember the slow developing counter play that we ran and he got tackled for like a six yard loss? Like, I didn't like some of the, you know, types of runs. Uh, just keep being physical inside. We would kill them in between the tackles. That's where our biggest runs came. We had a couple of nice hits on some off tackle outside things. And, but for the most part, I felt like the, the real, um, you know, good, good yardage came right in between the tackles. And I didn't think there were enough of those runs. And I thought we needed to have one DeAndre Carter or Curtis Samuel, you know, jet sweep or something to keep them honest. But it's no here nor there. Gibby had 23 carries for 88 yards. He says, who is the twin in the fam? Are you a twin? I am not a twin. But on my mom's side, she has twins. So that's where the twins came from. He says, congrats. Uh, enjoy your little ones while you can. Trust me, you don't have to remind me of that. I know. They don't stay little forever. Um, he says, teen stage comes quick, fast, boom. Facts. He says, oh, that three-man rush prevent D hurts me every time. I didn't like it. I didn't like that. we. I wanted to rush four, keep rushing four, keep running games and twists and stunts up front because it doesn't seem like keeping that extra defender back does anything. Does it? Like, I don't, I, that's just me. I, I'd much rather put pressure on the quarterback and not necessarily blitz or anything, but Keep doing the like we they only scored 15 points the entire like we rushed three and he still threw it 50 60 yards down the field and it still was man to man coverage still was one on one with the safety like if you don't drop eight defenders it should be two dudes on anybody running 40 50 yards down the field and yet somehow he's one on Zay Jones is one on one with our safety Bobby McCain so if he, if it's gonna still be one on one 50 60 yards down the field. Why the hell are we rushing three and dropping eight then? I'm thinking if you drop an eight, there should be nobody getting behind this defense without two dudes running with them. I, that's just me. But I, I would continue to rush four. I, three, I just, I, I don't get it. I'm with you. I don't like three man rushes. I just don't get that. Um, let's see. Vincent Cole. Thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. My guy, Vincent Cope. Thank you for being a member of the MOBB rights. Showing some love. I really appreciate you, Vince. And I told you your boys was going to get it done. Um, my guy, Niners fan, was on the program on Sunday night after the, or Thursday night. It was after Thursday night after the Cowboys game. And I said, I told him to his face when he made a comment about potentially getting the five seed. I said, you talking about the five seed? You're not even winning this week. You're losing to Seattle. I mean, if anybody was there, you remember me making that comment. And I was serious when I said it. So you, you're not winning this week. You're not even beating Seattle. That's you, you don't have Debo Samuel. You can't outscore the Seahawks. Watch what I tell you. And look what happened. They lost. I, I didn't expect Seattle to score 30 either, though. I'd be lying to you if I would tell you I thought they were going to score 30. But I said they, they can score it enough to beat that. I thought it would be like 23 to 17. I didn't expect them to score 30, but they got it done. I thought they could win that game. And, um, you know, all of the Russell Wilson and Pete Carroll and their their regime is dead. It may ultimately be dead, but I thought it was grossly overstated this week. And, and you know how the league is. Everybody's throwing dirt on their grave, so they're going to naturally stick their hand up through the dirt. That's how it goes. And no better time to do it than against a family member that's banged up and uh, without their best player. So it happened. Appreciate you, Vincent Cole, as always. Thank you for the super chat. Metaphor. Thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. My guy, Metaphor, writes, TLH's arm doesn't get hit on that interception. Terry to the house. I don't know if it's Terry to the house, but I know Terry's open. 
I do know that. I think the drive stays alive. I do feel that way. But, you know, you'll never know. You know what else I'm pissed off about? If Curtis Samuel is able to keep his feet on that one screen early, oh, my God, it's a touchdown. Did we score on that drive, though? I think that was the opening drive of the game. So I don't know if I should be really tripping about it. I think we still ultimately scored anyway. But, boy, he had a touchdown. I think we scored on the Logan Thomas touchdown anyway, so it don't matter. But, yeah, boy. Uh, but if, Terry, if, if Taylor's arm doesn't get hit, I, Terry's open in zone coverage. I think he gets it to him, and I think we move the sticks, and we get in the field goal range. And you know, But if could have, should have, would have, but obviously it did get hit, and it did get picked, and uh, it made the path to victory that much harder. But we persevered as we've done on this four-game win streak, and we found a way to get it done, and that's all that matters. J.B. Johnson, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. My guy, JB, writes, congrats on the Twins. Hope Sweat comes back. Um, thank you. He says, wasn't it Sweat who was wreaking havoc on Dallas last year with the pick six? What was up with Heineke not rushing? Um, so, yes, um, he, he had the pick six against um, Andy Dalton last year in Dallas on Thanksgiving. That is a fact. Um some of Sweat's best games have come against Dallas. He, he had, in his rookie season, he had like a two-sack game on the final week of the season against Dallas. I mean, it was meaningless for us. We stumped that year, but he still went out and balled. Um, you also had, um, like you said, last year's game. Um, I think he had a sack in the game in Washington, and then he had the pick six against them in Dallas. Uh, either way. Um, Heineke not running. I don't know what's up with him and not wanting to take off. There have been opportunities for him to run. He's taken sacks. He, you know, uh, there was one uh, play in this game where he threw it to somebody. I think it was, and it ultimately ended up being incomplete. I'm like, bro, why you just didn't take the seven? They were giving you seven. Take seven. Get out of bounds. Slide. Whatever you do, what you do. But uh, I, I can tell you this much: um, he's got to be willing to run. Like that run at the end of that that uh, drive that you know allowed us to get the touchdown to to extend the lead back out to eight, that was huge. He's got to do more of that. It can't be where it's like this absolute last ditch effort. Like Derek Carr was showing him how to do it. I'm like, this is Derek Evan Carr that's out here showing you up using his legs, bro. Run. You're a better athlete than Derek Carr. Run. Don't just stand there. Run. Don't take a sack. Run. Don't just stand there. Run. He wouldn't run. He finally took off. Literally, the Black Sea had to part for him to decide. It's third down. I should probably take this and run. You think? There were times where he got sacked in this game. I was like, bro, you didn't even have to take that sack. You didn't have to take that sack. He refuses to tuck it and run. He's trying to make plays with his arm. I get it. But sometimes, just take what they're giving you. If they're giving you the, 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 the opportunity to use your wheels, use them. Don't, don't put them in the garage. Use them. Um, let's see. Journey Reed, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. My guy Journey writes in the hospital with it, though. You know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Um, I was again, wasn't anticipating this. I just so happened to take my laptop with me because I was gonna, I planned on watching the games. I didn't think this we were gonna have to stay here, you know what I mean? I didn't know what the situation was, but here we are. And I just so happened to have my webcam in the bag because I had taken it with me on Thanksgiving and never took it out. So I had everything I needed. So I said, what, what the hell? Why not? And I was amped after the game, as you can tell. So I just said, why the hell not? Um, he says, congrats, my guy. I appreciate that. He says, good defensive performance. I thought I want uh, them cowgirls. You demand them. You demand, Journey. Thank you. And we all want Dallas. I, I can't stress it enough. Um, how badly I want them and, and want to, but we, this is what we're asking for, right? We better be careful what we ask for. So we need to get them, and not only do we want them, we need to beat them. Okay, it's not what it's one thing to want them; it's another thing to get them. Now we got to do what it is we need to do when we. Do. So we'll see what happens. Um, appreciate you, Journey. Will Morales, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. My guy, Will, writes, Big Lou, Will, 
He says, the juju is real. Yes, but look, we've got a lot built up. The karma is definitely real and it's on our side right now. We got a lot of good juju that we've built up. There's a lot of bad things that have been done to us, unjustifiably so, okay? We really, really had some poor calls go against us this season and we haven't complained. We haven't bitched. We've gotten it together and we've taken our lumps. But I, to, I, I talked to the football guys and I said, look, y'all owe us. Okay. Y'all, some of these games, you didn't even it up during the game. You owe us. We built up equity here. So we got some good juju and we live in right. You know, when you're living right, these are the kinds of things that go in your favor. You know, a lot of people are like, man, we got some calls last week. Yeah. You, you know what? We deserve those calls last week. For, for every call that we get, there's the call that we didn't get earlier in the season, you know? So I love it. He says, we are finally receiving some love from the football gods after so many years of painful close gains. Twins coming, baby. Indeed, Will. And that's right. We are in a position now to reap the benefits of years of poor calls that didn't go our way. They owe us. Worst case scenario, they owe us. And now we're coming to recoup. And I don't feel bad about it. And neither should you. As a fan, you shouldn't feel bad about it either. So thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you, Will Morales. Um, William Lee, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. My guy, Will, writes, you know, right place to watch the football. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. Um, Right, because if I if I would have had a heart attack, I'd be in the right place to get some treatment, right? <laughs> that's a good one, man. That's a really, really good one. Oh man, that's that's good. That's priceless. Jake Willis, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. My guy Jake, thank you for being a member of the MOBB and thank you for your generosity. I really do truly appreciate you. My wife says thank you once again. The twins say thank you. Um, and thank you for your generosity and the dono. My guy Jake writes, prayers for you and your family. Thank you. Taking all prayers, accepting all prayers, and, and uh, all well wishes. This team played hard that they did. Raiders disrespectful, but we took care of business and earned a win. Big test next week. This is good experience for a young team. It is. Um, you know, I don't necessarily feel like the Raiders were disrespectful as much as um, they were trying to get a win, too. And they're, they're fighting for their playoff lives as well. I didn't love the local Thomas low hit. I thought that was trash. But, you know, what can you do? You know, it's football. Um, but I, I said this much. We got to win this for Logan now, just like we had to win it for Chase when he went down against him. I said, we got to find a way to win this game now. And that's exactly what we did. And we took care of business. And um, the, the best revenge in a situation like that is to win. That's the best revenge. You know, as upset as I was when that happened, ain't nothing better than getting a dub and telling them to, to take that. And, and, and you know what? F y'all, take this L with you. You know what I'm saying? And as somebody said earlier in the comment section, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, but guess what? This dub coming home with us, not to the DMV. So, yeah, that's the best way to give it back to them. Y'all want to play like that? Okay. Y'all want to bend our quarterback like a pretzel? Y'all want to take out our tight end, go low at his knees? That's how y'all want to do it? Okay, don't worry about it. Take this L and take this damage to your playoff hopes and chances. Take that too. So, in the end, we got him back, and, and we hit him where it hurts. You know, hit them where it hurts. In the win-loss column, that's where it hurts the most. So, and it's, it's definitely a big game next week. And, it's, and like you said, it's a big test, too. Because, look, I feel like we play quality opponents despite the record. Seattle's dangerous. Russell Wilson's dangerous. Um, you know, the Panthers with Cam, that was a playoff environment. We knew we were walking into the, the Panthers' mouth that week. You know, they coming off of a big win on the road to Arizona. They were juiced. That's a big win. And then, of course, being Tom Brady and the Super Bowl defending champions, that's a humongous win. But we're going to get another test. The Raiders are no push up. They just beat Dallas, the team we're playing this upcoming week. So I feel good. It's another test, but we've passed every test, and I'm not afraid of this test, this next test. So um, any experience is good experience for a young team, good or bad. 
you know, you learn from the mistakes, uh, but winning is the best for a young team because it gives them confidence. It's hard to get a young team to believe when they don't see the, re the fruits of their labor resulting in victories. And I've, I've tried to explain that to you guys. Like, it's hard for a young team to understand that what they're being preached to do is the right thing if they don't see results telling them that what they're doing is working so now that we're winning games this young team can start to believe that what they're being coached to do is the right thing and now everybody can play on one accord so um, i love it it's, it's a great feeling now we need to try to continue thank you once again jake willis for the support and your generosity truly do appreciate you Melvin Carlson, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. My guy, Melvin, thank you for being a member of the MOBB rights. Hail to our kicker, and thank you for doing your job. Yes, Brian Johnson, <laughs> thank you for doing your job. Um, that was a massive kick, obviously, and it was one that I wasn't sure he was going to make. I, you know what? I was never negative on him i was just skeptical especially after the first extra point i was like Ugh, guys that didn't look good that wasn't a good omen but um, he got it together he made all of his kicks and we needed every single one of them. Could, could you imagine had you just missed an extra point right then the raiders don't have to go for two the game is totally different and the outcome is totally different but instead, he made all of his kicks. It forced the Raiders to have to for two, and that ultimately ended up being the difference in the game. And, and this is the thing. And I was one of those people that were a proponent of holding on to Dustin, right? I thought that they should have moved on from him, but I said, wait till the bye week. They did it a week before the bye week, or two weeks as they did it before the Green Bay game. Uh, they did it after the Chiefs game. And uh, I wasn't the biggest fan of it. It, it really didn't impact us because, I mean, could we have beaten Denver if we don't have two block kicks? Maybe, maybe. But who's to say he would have made the kicks anyway, right? Like that's the problem with Dustin is you just don't know when he's going to miss the extra point or he's going to miss the field goal. Every one of these games we've won, our kickers have been clutch and they haven't missed kicks. And that's one thing we can't say about Dustin. We can't say that if he kicks it five times in a game, he's going to make three extra points and two field goals, or three field goals and two extra points. That was never his thing. He'd always miss at least one kick. So. It's great to know that these kickers have stepped up and had their number called, and they found a way to get it done. And uh, Brian Johnson deserves a game ball. And I'm, I'm pretty sure we'll, we'll go to uh, the Washington site or, you know, it'll be on socials, and Ron Rivera will be giving Brian Johnson a game ball, and he deserves it. And if, if his future isn't in Washington, which I think Joey Sly deserves an opportunity to get his job back when he's healthy, if his future isn't in Washington, hopefully this will help him keep a job if he continues to kick well for us. But it's just one game. I don't want to overreact. It's just one game, but it was a hell of a kick, and it helped us win a hell of a game. So, like you said, thank you for doing your job, Brian Johnson. Low-key, not low-key. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. I got low key, not low key, right? Louie, I was at the game. The amount of Washington fans that showed up was a surprise. Las Vegas has a nice crib, and we all had our shoes all on their couch, Lou. LOL. <laughs> I could tell. I said this at the top of the show. I was like, man. First of all, my guy Josh C, and I told y'all this, he sent me a bunch of messages on IG pretty much showing me he had a couple of homeboys that were out there in Vegas. And I was like, man, there's a lot of Washington fans out there. But, you know, I, I was planning on going to the game, you know, before my wife got pregnant. You know, we knew that the babies were going to be due right around this time. I was, We were planning on going to the Vegas game. And so um, I, I figured that many Washington fans, because we only play Vegas once every eight years in Vegas, you, you know what I'm saying? Like the next four years, more likely than not, we won't play them. And if we do play them, it'll be in Washington, more likely than not. So you're not going to get this opportunity to go again for a very long time. It's a brand new stadium. So a lot of the fans probably wanted to see it. And when look, there were times in the game when a penalty was called, and it was on the Raiders, and it sounded like a home game. And I was like, oh, my God, we are representing in there. Like, we done took over their crib. Like you said, we had our feet off, our shoes off. We had the feet on the coffee table. 
you know, we were ordering them around. Hey, come get us a drink from the kitchen, man. What you waiting on? Chop, chop. Like, I mean, we were so disrespectful and I loved it. Now, now if we could only have the same energy at home, we, we, we do this all the time, we, but we show up. Like, we had, we had Washington fans at Carolina's game. You know, there was a big contingency there of Washington fans. When we go on the road, we travel well. Can we bring that same energy back to FedEx? I get it. It's a dump. And as I said last week, it's our half-filled, you know, sewage leaking dump. It's ours, though. Respect our house. Wipe your feet off when you step in our house. We didn't do that today with the Raiders. And we didn't have to do that because we came away with the dub. <laughs> so... I was shocked at how many fans were there representing Burgundy and Gold, but I loved it. Now can we do it at home? Because you know Dallas is going to bring their full complement of fans to try to take over FedEx. Our goal is to not allow that to happen. It's going to happen. They're going to have at least 30% of the crowd. Let's not let it get to 35, 40, 45%, okay? Four games in a row may feel may make people feel like they can get off of their couch and come out to the game. We'll see what happens, but I was shocked, and I'm glad that y'all took y'all shoes off and got right comfortable in their house. You know how people always say, oh, come on in, have a seat, get comfortable. We literally did that. We took it to heart. Great game. Way to represent. John C. Davis, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. My guy, C. D. My guy, O. G. Chauncey Davis. Uh, double up. Uh, uh, thank you for doubling up. Right. Luke Chauncey. These first eight games has prepared us for anything. Confidence is high now. Don't get it twisted. No one wants to face us right now. I don't think anyone wants to face us. And, you know, we're not going to get any respect. And I told you, I'm perfectly fine with that. I'm perfectly fine with us not getting the the accolades or, you know, getting the sideline reporter to get our starting quarterback's name correct, even though she's been spending the whole week working on that story. I, I love the fact that they can't get his name right. They don't bother to, to figure out what's going on with this team because they don't think we're serious. I love the fact that Troy Aikman thinks, oh, Dallas is going to have this division wrapped up in the next couple of weeks. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> we'll see about that. We'll see how that goes. I love the fact that people are just dismissing what we're doing. Oh, it's cute. It's fun. We won a couple of games. They still got Taylor Heineke at quarterback, so we don't take them serious. Interesting. I like the way you think. Let's see if we can make a lot of people. I'm hoping we can. We'll see. But the confidence, to your your point, is extremely high. It's through the roof right now. And I told you how that works. You win games, you gain confidence. You gain confidence, you win more games. And you continue that vicious flavor, delicious cycle. And we're doing it right now better than anybody in football. Does anybody have a, a, a longer win streak than us right now? I mean, that's something to ponder. I mean, who's winning games right now? The, the Cardinals, they lost to the Panthers um, three weeks ago. So their, their win streak isn't as long as ours. Who else is winning games? In this? Nobody's on a, a heater like us. Right now, y'all can tell me this in the comment section. Does anybody have a four-game win streak or, or better but us? Are we the hottest team in football right now? Ask yourself that. I don't know the answer. I'm just going through, you know, everybody's schedule in my head, and I'm thinking to myself, ain't nobody else won four games in a row. That would be us. The Ravens, I think they, I think they had won three in a row. The Dolphins, the Dolphins. That's the other team. I'm trying to think. I think the Dolphins have won five in a row. They might be the only other team. They're now six and seven. They were one and seven, if I'm not mistaken, before they beat um, the Texans and then they got hot. So it's the Dol go figure, right? The two hottest teams in football are the Miami Dolphins and the Washington football team. Who would have thought two months ago that anybody would be having a conversation about the six and seven, five in a row, red hot Miami Dolphins and the two and six then? Now four games in a row winning Washington football team at six and six. Who would have thought those would be the, the teams in their respective conferences that were the hottest going into the middle of December? Not <laughs> a love football, right? H. Lucas, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Thank you for being a member of the MOBB. 
my guy H. Lucas writes. Number 98, boy, did we miss him. Number four, straight. He says, Mob Squad Madness. I love it. Um, it was good to see 98 back out there running around and making some things happen. He's been so close this year, man. Has um, Matt Ioannidis, you know, he, remember he almost had the safety against Jameis Winston and the Saints. Like, he's been so close this year. Like, I can think of like three or four different instances where he's come close but hasn't been able to back the quarterback. It was so good to see him finally get him some. And uh, it was that was a big play in the game as well. So, um, I, I'm hoping this is the beginning of 98 going on a tear where he's starting to just bag them at an alarming rate. And then, you know, you get swept back and all of a sudden Jonathan Allen, and then maybe we might be able to generate some rush without having to blitz and, and really get nasty up front. So um, it's four straight. Mob squad, stand up. We in the building. Y'all know what it is. And B, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Thank you for being a member of the MOBB, my guy, Ed writes. Enjoying the win and excited for your family's blessings. Thank you. I really do appreciate that. He said, things that create memories, uh, forever memories. You guys will forever remember the day I did a live stream from the hospital. That's the same day we beat the Raiders. You'll never forget it. And I will never forget it either. So, yeah. <laughs> um, JB Johnson, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Thank you for doubling up. Uh, double up. Uh, uh. Thank you for doubling up, J.B. Johnson, who writes, Washington football team seems to be allergic to stepping on opposing teams' neck. I already told you that's not who we are. That's the next evolution of where this team is going, is being able to take a team that we have down and keep them down, not allow them to hang around and make it interesting, but to run away and hide and beat somebody 27 to 10, to beat someone 34 to 13. That is the next step in our evolution. We're not there yet. We don't have that in us right now. We're a nice team, okay? We want everybody to get a chance. We want everybody to have an opportunity. We want to keep it close. We're not we don't have that mean streak yet. Hopefully, we will continually grow towards that, and we're, we're working on that. You know, we're working towards that goal of becoming a vicious team that sees an opportunity and, and absolutely jumps at it and takes it. But we're, we're not looking to crush anyone's larynx right now. I told you, got somebody down. We want to hand them. We want to extend a hand. Come on, man, get up. Come on, come on get up. We want to help people up. We're not looking to elbow drop them off the top rope or stone cold stunner somebody. We want to help them up. I'm looking to take one of those metal chairs to somebody's back, and then as they're trying to get up, crack them over the skull with it. That's not what we're doing right now. We're helping people up. But as long as at the end they're down and we're up, I'm good. But you, I told you, it'd be a lot better if at the end of these games, instead of us having to go on these marathon drives or, or having our heart in our throat because we're hanging on for dear life, it'd be nice to have one of these games result in a, in a, in a big game at the end. But that's not where we're at right now. So, JB, don't look for that. That's not who we are. Don't look for that. He says, every single solitary time we go up by a touchdown, we refuse to add to that lead. You know what was so encouraging with that opening drive is that we had everything going. The run worked. They got Taylor out of the pocket. We were being aggressive, getting chunk plays. Logan Thomas was wide open. And actually, Heineke was high. That was a great catch by Logan in the back of the end zone because that was not a great ball. And everything was working. And I'm thinking, man, we might do these boys today. You know, defense comes out, gets a stop. We get the ball back. I'm like, oh, let's get it back and let's go right back down the field on these boys. And what we do, we, we, we pretty much got stuck on seven for the entire first half. Was cool with seven points. Like, hey, we good right here, man. This is this is real comfy, cozy right here. This seven, I can, I can manage this. So we saw eight. Like, like Smokey's mom, make it enough. Okay, the seven points, make it enough. The 14, make it enough. The 17, make it enough. It is what it is. William Lee, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. My guy, William Lee writes, Lou, you still want Cousins? He gave Detroit their first dub. 
He didn't give them anything. He took his team down the field. They scored a touchdown to take the lead. The defense gave up the touchdown, okay? I didn't watch the game, so I don't know what else occurred, but he took them down the field. They took the lead 27 to 23, I believe, with a minute and 40-something seconds left. It's not his job to play defense, too, but no. I mean, would I still want Kirk? Yeah, I, I would have taken Kirk over all of this nonsense we've had the last three, four years. But, you know, I'm. am I glad he's not here? Sure, because we got Heineke, and I'm ready to move on with whatever the future of our quarterback position looks like, whether it's a young guy that's not here yet or it's Heineke or it's somebody else. I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. But I would have taken Kirk over anybody on the roster last year at quarterback, anybody on the roster the year before that or the year before that. Alex Smith, healthy. Give me Kirk Cousins over a healthy Alex Smith. Sorry, not sorry. But he's no longer here. We don't really need to harp on him being here. Similar to Robert Griffin III, we don't need to really talk about it. He's no longer here. He's doing, you know, whatever he's doing for Minnesota. Anytime they win, it's his fault or lose. Um, it's his fault. Anytime they win, he doesn't get any credit. That's always going to be the Kirk uh, Cousins narrative. But uh, we won. I can't, I don't worry about what Minnesota's doing. We won. So that's all I care about. Heineke, four or four in opportunities in late game situations to get it done. And, and that's the difference between Kirk Cousins and Taylor Heineke. We're keeping it a buck. It's Heineke finds ways to get it done. And he tried to throw a pick. He tried to throw a pick. The Raiders didn't want it. We'll take it. Thanks. You don't want it, we'll take it. Thanks. So um, another super chat. This one is from You Can Play Games on Linux. Thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. You can play games on Linux, right? Before anyone says they can beat Dallas, remember these Raiders beat them. Or he says, before anyone says that we can't or they can't beat Dallas, remember these Raiders beat them. That INT wasn't on Heineke. He was taking a beating all game and his arm was hit on the throw. Congrats on the new babies. Thank you for that. Really appreciate you. They're not here yet, as I mentioned, but uh, they're coming eventually here in the next day or two. So um, thank you for that. The well wishes. Greatly appreciate that. Um, I, I said that earlier, too. You can, you can play games on Linux. Um, that Heineke was under siege, especially on the right side. I thought Cornelius Lucas, he had his hands full. And Max Crosby is one of the better pass rushers in the league. So that wasn't, I, I talked about that in, in the, the keys to the game. I'm like, look, Max Crosby got the most hits on quarterbacks. He's got the highest pressure rate of any edge rusher in the league. Um, so that wasn't a surprise. Cornelius Lucas had his hands full. I didn't think we did a, a good enough job of chipping and giving him help. Like, you just left him on an island like Cornelius Lucas is that guy. Like, he's going to just shut him down. Like, thought they, like, I think most people got to see the replay and understood that Heineke's arm, I saw it live, his arm was hit. Like, that ball, like, okay, for all of the Heineke doesn't have a strong arm people out there, yeah, he doesn't have a strong arm. But come on, now, you didn't really think Heineke threw the ball like that, right? All flicked it like that. Like, come on, you had to know his arm was hit. So, um, and yes, the same Raiders team that we just beat that scored 30, what is it, 36 on Dallas? They could only muster 15 against us. So, um, I look, they're, Dallas is different. Uh, they're, they're, first of all, they're a different team because they didn't have C.D. Lamb or they didn't have Amari Cooper, didn't have any of that stuff to contend with. That's part of the narrative in that situation. And Dallas still put up 33. So we know Dallas is explosive, they're dynamic, and they're going to have 10 whole days off before they play us. So just because the Raiders beat them doesn't mean we can beat them. We can beat them on our own merit just because we can beat them because it's family business, because we know them, and because we're a damn good football team. That's why we can beat them, not because the Raiders beat them, um, because it, it doesn't always work that way. You know, you'd like it to work that way, but it doesn't always work that way. So um, thank you for the Super Chat. You can play games on Linux. Greatly appreciate you. HTTR Lot, thank you for the Super Chat. Greatly appreciate you, who writes, Nah, Lou, it's feeling like 2005 vibes when we won seven straight. I can see that, too. I can see that, too. However, back in 05, I felt like we were so limited offensively. Like, if the defense wasn't going to go all Baltimore Ravens, oh, you know, 01 Ravens on me, 
um, or 2,000 Ravens, excuse me, then I didn't think we were going to legitimately have a shot because our offense was anemic at the end of that season. Like Mark Brunel could barely throw a five-yard pass. We had Taylor Jacobs and David Patton and all these kinds of guys that received. Like, we were awful at receiver. So, honestly speaking, this feels more like 2012 where we could score. I thought we could play with anybody. I do think the defense has a 2005 feel to it, more so than 2012. I don't think our defense was, was great in 2012, but it was good enough. Uh, that's kind of how I feel about this defense, though. So it's, it's like 05's defense was different. That's not what this defense is. It's good. It's not 05, though. Don't get that American start in 05 either. Okay? <laughs> so the bottom line is um, I think it's more 2012 than 05, but um, there are similarities. I will, I will grant you that. Um, we're not there yet. That team won seven in a row, as you just mentioned. We've only won four. We've got a big one coming up next week to make it five. So um, right now it's more like last year because last year we won four in a row and then we went and lost two out of the next three. So it's, until we get over that threshold, it's more like last year. We win this game against Dallas and then it's five and now we can start having that 2012 conversation. You know, and then and then we can start having some conversations about 05 and winning a playoff game like they did because that's the last time we won a playoff game. So we'll see. TM Sleep. Thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. TM Sleep writes, with all of these hits Taylor took this year, it's great that he buffed up in season. It's humongous that he did that because there I can't tell you how many times he's gotten hit folded around and bent around like that Panthers hit he took, the hit he took tonight, where you're like, oh my gosh. You know, they, then there are hits that don't look as egregious, where you know he took one earlier in the game where he had to walk it off. Like, all that work he put in in the offseason, it's, it's definitely paying off, for sure. Without a doubt. And um, this is why you, like, like a wise man said, this is why you lift all them weights. This is why you do the things that you do in the offseason, for it to pay off now. It's paying off for Taylor Heineke. Let's see if we got any more super chats. We got one here from Farrah Cody. Thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Farrah Cody writes, go watch Ron's locker room speech. So hype. I, I, I can't wait to see it. You know how I feel about those. I, I, I yearn for those every single week, okay? Um, I can't wait to watch Ron because um, that was a big one. I mean, let's call a buck a buck. You know, let's call a spade a spade. Like, that was a tough one, and you had a, a, a you know kicker that just got here a week ago, come in and kick the game-winning kick, and then the defense had to go back on the field and preserve it, make it stick. That's huge, you know. Um, and in the MLBB, we were talking about this. We said after the Raiders scored their first, um, the the second field goal to cut it to seven to six, right? And that was their I want to say it was the maybe late stages of the third because yeah, we got the football and then we scored our first touchdown of the second half to start the fourth. So it was late stages, mid stages, late stages of the third. Raiders score their field goal, cut it to a one point game at seven to six. And in the MOBB, we all said the same thing. This is why I love the mob squad because they, they own it. Right. They said, hey, we got to respond. And that, that's been my theme in the mob It's like, hey. You know, ever since the Tampa game, respond. Ever since Mike Evans, you know, after the, the Dax Mill fumble, the Mike Evans subsequent touchdown, and, the, and the, the Buccaneers looked like they were coming for us. You know, it's, it's, 20, it's 23 to 19, and they, they're coming, you know. And I'm like, oh, shit, here they come. And I said, respond. Good teams right now, a little bit of adversity hits. You feel, you feel the Super Bowl champions staring down your neck, you know, they're breathing on your neck and they're staring over you and they're like, okay, make a mistake if you want to. It's Brady time. And what did we do? We responded. Panthers go down, tie the game up at 21, big throw from Cam to, to Christian McCaffrey and the crowd's going wild. What do we do? Respond. Field goal. Like, every time we respond, I said, and everybody in the mob said, we need to respond. And what do we do? Put together a drive that took up the rest of the third quarter into the fourth Third down and goal, and Heineke finds Gibby. Touchdown. Huge response. Not a field goal. Touchdown. Make the extra point. I was like, yo, Brian, don't piss me off. I need this extra point to make it eight. 
that's a big deal here. He made it. So it forced the Raiders to have to go out and get a touchdown and a two-pointer, and they couldn't get the two. And, and I said, all right, we gave up the touchdown. It is what it is. Respond. What did they do? Respond with a field goal. Take the lead. All right, defense, it'd be great if you could put this away. Defense said, I got you. They went out and got the stop, got the ball back to the offense. Offense has a chance to put it away with 10 minutes. This is what we've done. And what happens? Interception happens. Adversity hits. Last year, or the year before that, or the years pre previous, we fold. Earlier in the season, hell, we don't need to go back to last year. We fold like a cheap lawn chair. What do we do this year? Yep. Uh, defense stands up. Doesn't give up a touchdown. Gives up a field goal. Doesn't give up the seven. Forces them to kick a field goal. And now we've got a chance. Heineke, go do your thing. Ultra, 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 ultra. He tried to be Heine, Heine genuine draft. He tried to be. But it was ultra time. And he got it done. And we responded again, and then the defense came on one final time, and they responded. Because I was nervous about the defense having to come back on the field with 31 seconds and, and the Raiders having a timeout. All it took was one big play over the middle of the field. We're good for it. We saw it against Seattle last week. We're good for one big play for 30, 32 yards over the middle of the field, call the timeout, and all of a sudden now they're in field goal range. We didn't allow that to happen. He tried us deep, and Bobby McCain, who was massive in this game, stepped up and made a play. So... Um, I can imagine Ron's locker room speech was awesome. Hey, here's the rock. Throw that bitch. Throw it. I, I can't wait to see it. Thank you for the super chat, Eric Cody. Um, White Run Guard. Thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Who writes? Thoughts on Minshew. Eagles fans are going crazy. Um, it was the Jets, man. Like, I'd be a lot more... Um, Emphatic if I were an Eagles fan, if that were the Cowboys or, you know, that were the Buccaneers or some team with some kind of chops. It was the Jets. I mean, he, he did what he was supposed to do. Um, I haven't watched the game, so I can't tell you. Obviously, I was here, so I didn't get to see it, but um, I'll watch it. I'll, I'll, I, look, we all know that he's a better quarterback than Jalen Hurts throwing the football. What he lacks in mobility he can make up for his ability to throw it. Like everybody knows he's a better option throwing the football, but is he better for that team? Can he, can he provide um, a, a spark in the pass game, but you lose a lot in the run game with him? You know, we'll see. Again, if I'm an Eagles fan, that's an interesting debate. Minshew versus Hurts. I'm not afraid of either one. I'd much rather take my chances with Jim Hurts, even though he can hurt you with his legs. He's not the thrower that Gardner Minshew is. So I'd, I'd much rather take my chances with Hurts. Um, I'm nervous about his legs because I know how dynamic he can be. But at the end of the day, I, you, you, a lot of times you get hurt in, in, the, in this league in the pass game. you got to be able to throw it. And Hurts, he doesn't scare me. So if I were an Eagles fan, I'd probably want Minshew out there because – in order to score, like, when's the last time the Eagles scored 30 anything in a game? Like, I get it. It's the Jets. Again, I, I mean, this is coming off the heels of scoring a whole seven points against the Giants last week in that same building that they played in and scored 33 this week against the Jets. Like, the Giants are good defensively. They're not that good where they should be shutting you down and you only score seven points and your quarterback throws three interceptions. So I said all of that to say this. If I'm an Eagles fan, there's a discussion that definitely should be being had, but I, I don't know what the right decision is. I can't say what it is or isn't. I, as a as a non-Eagles fan that has to play the Eagles twice, I'd much rather see Jalen Hurts. I'll just say that. Raymond Spencer, welcome aboard. Raymond, stand up. You are now officially in the building as a brand new member of the MOBB. Raymond. You know what it is, mob. I know what time it is. Open your arms wide and show Raymond some love. Good to have you. Welcome to the squad, Raymond Spencer. Low key, not low key. Uh, 
uh, double up, uh, uh. Thank you for doubling up. Greatly appreciate you. Low key, not low key. Right. Just had to do it for the double up. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Uh, double up, uh, uh. Ain't nothing wrong with it. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with it at all. Thank you for the super chat and the double up. Low key. Low key, not low key. James H., thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Thank you for being a member of the MOBB, James writes. Blessings to you and congrats. Thank you, James. Had me and my pops, JC, on pins and needles. Yeah. Ridiculous, though, how Jack wouldn't dial up a blitz. What a play by McCain. Jack dialed up a couple of blitzes. But I told y'all, Jack hadn't really been blitzing uh, during this stretch. We've just been playing better zone coverage. That's been the difference. These guys are you know, being smarter in their, in their zone drops and we're pattern matching better. And so it's the same. And, and you, as you saw, guys are still open. Quarterbacks aren't finding them. You know, Russell Wilson had dudes open two weeks ago. He just didn't find them. Derek Carr had guys open. He just didn't find them or he didn't hit them. Again, that's not our fault. But there's still guys open. These quarterbacks just aren't finding them. We can't leave these guys open against Dak Prescott next week. Or it'll be a long week. So um, we got to be better. But, um, yeah, we, we, were, we were all on pins and needles. And um, McCain was huge. That play was massive. I, th I thought McCain was outstanding today, honestly. Um, anyway. But uh, shout out to Jack Del Rio, too, for getting the win. This was a revenge game for him. Hopefully he got a game ball his first time back. Obviously, it's not Oakland. It's Vegas, but it's still the Raiders. And, you know, this is his first time back. And uh, everybody got their revenge game in Carolina. He got his today. And it was good that we were able to get the win for Jack Del Rio. DMV Sports Zone. Thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. DMV Sports Zone writes, congrats, my guy. Thank you so much. Really do truly appreciate you. Um, Brian Norfleet, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Thank you for your generosity. Brian, greatly appreciate you. Who writes, congrats, Mr. and Mrs. Louie. Double up. Is there a registry we can go to? Um, actually, there is. Um, I'm going I'm to get that link for you, and uh, I will put it in the uh, next video that I do if for anybody that's interested. Uh, our, our registry is on Amazon, so um, I will put that link in the description. Uh, matter of fact, I'll pin that comment to this video and I'll put it in uh, the, the future videos. I'll pin that comment for anyone that's interested. Uh, so thank you, uh, Brian Northley. Greatly appreciate you. MTM Marathana. Maratha. I always mess that up. We're just going to go with MTM. Marantha. I think that's what it is. Marantha. Thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. MTM. Right. Twins, Lou, GBU, and wife. Thank you. I'm going to need it. Y'all pray for me because once these two little ones get here, hey, look, I've had, you know, my fair share of little ones throughout my life. I ain't never had two at the same time. So this is all new to me. And I've had people, um, and I, I appreciate each and every single one of you who have reached out gracious with the game. If you got game, I'm, my ears are open. If you got some game to give, I'm listening to all of it. I've gotten pretty much the same feedback from everyone who's dealt with twins before. Get them on the same feeding and sleeping schedule if you can. Easier said than done, I understand. But um, that, that's the goal. That is the goal, to try to get them sleeping and eating at the same time. But I think one's going to be the night owl up with dad, and the other one's going to be a daytime baby. So uh, we'll see. Uh, I hope I'm wrong. If both of them just go to sleep at the same time. But we will see. Thank you once again, MTM, for the super chat. Door Gunner, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you, my guy, Door Gunner writes. What up, Lou? Back home watching games live. It's so good to have you back, man. And I know you'll be in attendance at the Dallas game. That's awesome. He says, I already have enough stress in my life. And then add this team to the mix. Be there to smash Dallas. Absolutely. And 
I'm just glad you're back on the U.S. soil and uh, you're here in time enough to see these boys doing what they're doing. And now you're going to be in attendance for them uh, as they take on Dallas. It should be wild. And um, as we get deeper into the week, you know what it is. I'm going to tell you right now, you know what it is. But when we get into the week, one goal, one objective, get it done. Get in, get out, and bring it back. And you know what it is. So good to have you back, Dork Gunner. And, uh, that's four in a row, baby. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, Bo was this. Thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. My guy, Bo. It's been a while, man. It feels like it's been a while, Bo. Um, my guy, Bo, writes, Yo, Lou, it's been a minute. What did I just say? Didn't I just say it felt like it's been a while? It feels like it's been a really long time since we've chopped it up. We used to chop it up on a regular. He says, congrats on the twins. Thank you for that. And let's get ready for this NFC East tournament. I'm so hyped right now. And yes, we're running the table. I'm with it. I've been with it since the Tampa game. I told you I was going to reserve judgment on talking crazy and greasy until after we beat Carolina. We did that. Now I told you there's no turning back. All right. You know, we like McFadden and Whitehead now. Ain't no stopping us now. We on the move. Moving, grooving. Ain't no stopping us now. You know what I'm saying? Like, we here. And we finally coming around. It ain't it ain't no stopping us now, man. We on the move. And um, I don't see nobody stopping us. Only, only, only team that can stop us is us. So we'll see what happens. But... Um, I'm ready to run the table if you are, you know, ain't nothing to it but to do it. So hopefully the fellas can keep keep this uh, momentum going. Uh, I'd love to find out the status of Logan Thomas, see how significant that injury is. Uh, I, I know he's not going to be back for next week. The question is, can we get him back, you know, three, four weeks from now? Because yeah, Logan's such a big part of this offense. And you saw the impact. Nobody else on our team is catching that ball in the back of the end zone the way he did. That's an incomplete pass. Who knows if we get another opportunity to score on that first possession? We might have to settle for a field goal. You know how huge it was for him to climb the ladder and catch that football? He needed to be 6'6 with that wingspan to come down with that football. If that's Ricky Seals-Jones, it's incomplete. If that's, you know, um, John Bates, it's definitely incomplete. So, man, he's huge, especially in the red zone. Had a big third down catch. You know where he had to climb the ladder and go get it. Like he's huge. I hope he's okay. My girl Condo P says, "I hear that fetal monitor in the background. Yeah, it's it's real in the field out here, man. And y'all probably heard the the nurse coming in, uh, the midwife coming in and trying to adjust it so they can get those heartbeats. So y'all probably hearing a whole bunch of distortion." <laughs> It's real, man. Your boy is really in the hospital. These babies are really about to come. Like, it's not a game. <laughs> so I don't know if y'all thought it was a game, but it's not a game. You know, we, we, we really out here. Um, real Day D Productions. Everything. Thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Who writes, how bad do you think Logan Thomas's injury is? Looks very serious. It looks serious. Anytime a guy, I'm hoping it's a hyperextension. You know, it, it, it never feels good. Helmet on bone never feels good. Um, I love the fact that he was able to come back and sit with his teammates, but that don't mean a damn thing. I mean, John Mechie came back and sat with his teammates um, the rest of the game, but he had torn ACL. But I've also seen dudes come back, no crutches, sit with their teammates like John Moran on a non-contact injury, and it's just a, a, a knee sprain. And, you know, it's just a you know two, three-week injury. So I, I, I don't know. But anytime the helmet is placed firmly on, you know, kneecap, that's not good. That's not good. And so many different things can happen when that, that takes place. Uh, but I think it's more of a bruise. And I'm hoping that that's something that it needs two to three weeks for him to get back on the field. But, you know, for all he's been through just to get back on the field, to have that happen, that sucks. CGM87, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. My guy writes, Lou ordered dinner as Bruce and Fur like Chase laughing my ass off. It was funny. Somebody um, sent me uh, the link to that the other day. I had already seen it a million times, but yeah, <laughs> it was funny that he ordered his food from Chick-fil-A as Bruce Allen. Um, 
the great Watubi. Thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you, my guy. The great Watubi writes, opening line, Dallas is four and a half point favorites. Why don't we throw the uh, throw to hump earlier in the game? That line doesn't surprise me. Um, I told you, they, they don't respect us yet. They don't respect our four-game win streak. And we haven't been winning pretty. We haven't been scoring 30 points a game. We're, we're barely winning games. So um, they still think Dallas is the best in the division. And until we show them otherwise, Dallas is the best. They're 84. And so um, that four-point, four-and-a-half-point um, line is it's about right. So we should be four-and-a-half-point, five-point dogs. That's, that sounds about right. We got to prove it on the field. As for Hump, I, I can't tell you why they don't throw it to him more. I, I've been screaming that all season long. I, I, I can't tell you why it has to be third down or it has to be a critical situation or it's got to be late in the ball game for Hump to finally get involved. I, I can't answer that. I wish I had an answer for you, but I don't. So. Red Wing 01, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Uh, double up. Uh, uh. Um, Red Wings, 0-1. I think that's a double up. Might be a triple up. Right. Jack got his today. Called a great game. I thought Jack did a, a really good job of mixing up coverages, mixing up blitzes and things of that nature. Um, I thought that the blitzes were well-timed, even though we really didn't hit home with any of them. Um, but I thought he did a really good job. You know, um, I hated that Bobby McCain was one-on-one -on -one late in the game in, in a, you know, with the game on the line and you drop an eight, how is anybody 60 yards down the field one-on-one? -on -one? Still, that still boggles the mind, but I thought Jack called it a hell of a football game. So I'm right there with you. Rob, you. Thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. My guy, Rob, you. Thank you for being a member of the MOBB. Right. Congrats on the twins, champ. Appreciate that. Again, they're not here yet, but uh, I, I appreciate all the prayers and well wishes. Thank you. He says, so impressed with Bates as a blocker and receiver, but can someone please tell Taylor to set his feet when he throws the ball? Congrats again, man. And Taylor's starting to develop a nasty habit of throwing off of his back foot. And while it gets there sometimes, we've seen plays like the one that should have been picked off by Trayvon Merrick that easily could go the other way. He's got to stop doing that. I mean, if you, if you know you're going to get hit, there's one thing to fade away from pressure like he did on the throw to Terry on the first possession, on, you know, on a third down. You know the blitz is coming. You know you're going to get hit. You can fade back. Buy yourself time. Fade back and make that throw. But there are other times where you got to stand in there and you got to man up. You know you're going to take one of the chops. But you got to plant your feet set and you got to throw that thing and know that that impending shot is coming and you gotta be willing to take it. That's called staring down the gun barrel. And yeah, he's taking a, a pounding and he's getting hit. It's over? What is it? Oh man, my wife just told me guys, Logan Thomas, torn AC and MCL, done for the season guys. Um, that's just in, I'm pretty sure you guys already knew that, but my wife just dropped that gem on my melon I, my, my heart aches for Logan, and I, I knew it was probably nasty. You know, um, I told you I just saw John Mechie do the same exact thing yesterday for Bama, where he came back out on the field, um, on the sidelines rather, but his eyes were, you know, well, you could see the well, wells under his eyes swollen because he was crying. And Logan, he looked like he had cried a little bit, and I knew it was bad news, man. I was hoping it wasn't that bad, but damn it, man. Um, that, mm, that one stinks. That one hurts. Jeez. Mm. Just another obstacle that this team has to overcome this season. We've done it before. We'll do it again. But that, that, oh, that one pisses me off because that was so avoidable. That was dirty. J. Mark, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Uh, double up. Uh, uh. Thank you for doubling up. My guy J. Mark writes, for the double up, like the stream, hashtag girls dad. If you're a girl dad out there and you already know what it is, it's different. But man, that, that Logan one, that one hurt. That hurt the soul. I ain't gonna lie to you. Um, shout out to my wife for 
delivering the news, even though it was bad news. Um, that that one, whew, that one stings. Oh man, David Cardona, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Um, thank you for the comment. If I see another one down here from you, I'll just I'll read that one. I don't know if you just meant to just donate uh, or if you just didn't do it right. But um, thank you for the super chat, David Cardona. Leno Ryan Benavite, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Who writes? We came over twenty seven hundred miles across the Pacific. Cheers, drank, and hell yeah, we're bringing home the dub. Hell yeah. I'm excited. Hashtag 808 skins fan for life. There are a lot of you who travel so far to get to this game that live on the East Coast, went all the way out essentially to the West. And um, I told y'all it was just one goal, one thing. And um, y'all all did what y'all had to do. Collectively, y'all went out there as a unit. Y'all were tactical. Y'all were able to communicate. And you went in. And you came out with the dub. That one objective, you came home and brought it home. That's all it's about. I really appreciate guys like Leno, Ryan, Benavite, and everyone else that was in attendance that went home, uh, went to Vegas, and came home with the dub. I love it. Want more of it. Trevor Patch, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Who writes, CS had JD's banana shoes on the opening drive. Curtis Samuel. I mean, it wasn't a slip. Like, he, the, the defender got a piece of him, right? But I was like, just find a way to keep your feet. Put your hands down, something. You stay on your feet. It's a walk-in touchdown. It would have been nice to see Curtis get his first touchdown of the season. That would have been great. That would have been a touchdown. There was nobody else on that side of the field. It's an it easy walk-in touchdown. Um, but nobody has banana shoes quite like J.D. McKenzie. Trevor Patch, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. My guy, Trevor Rice. Philly will fall apart with their new QB controversy. Any controversy is a good controversy for a team not ours. So if anybody wants to have a controversy this late into the season, like if you're not sure who you are this late into the season, you got problems, man. So I'm glad to hear that. that now, this could just be all Philly fans. and This is not internally a struggle. Like their head coach, you know, Nick Sirianni might be like, nah, or Sirianni. I got to stop calling him Sirianni. Nick Sirianni might be like, bro, Jalen Hurts is our quarterback. Like, There's nothing to discuss. If I know Nick Sirianni like I think I know him, he wants a quarterback that can actually throw the ball. So this Gardner Minshew thing is going to be quite interesting, to say the least. Um, we'll see what happens. We will see what happens. My guy, JP, John Perez, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. John Perez writes, great week for me. Washington football team wins. LSU is heading to a bowl game, and we have a wedding date for October the 14th, 2023. Oh, and congrats on the twins. Congrats to you and your fiance. I remember when you first popped the question. Now you have an official date. That is so exciting. And um, cheers to you guys. Your, your LSU Tigers are right, bowl eligible. Um, that's awesome because it didn't look like it was going to be that way earlier this season. And, you know, Washington keeps the party going. It's, it's all good in the Perez household right now, for sure. Tony P56, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. My guy, Tony P56, writes, congrats, Lou. Thank you. He says, thanks to Mrs. Lou for allowing you to be here. Uh, she's always supported the movement, man. And um, she was part of the reason I'm even doing this. She was like, you going to go live? I'm like, eh, I'm not sure. She was like, you should do it, you know? And so she was kind of pushing me to do this because I wasn't sure if I was going to do it. And, you know, my wife's my backbone. You know, none of this is possible without her. And, you know, the fact that I'm in a hospital in the corner posted up doing a video is all her, you know, like she's allowing all of this to transpire, whether I'm at home and she's holding down my three-year-old son so that he's not running amok or, you know, we're in a hospital bed and, and she's gutting it out while I'm in here trying to get a video done. It's, it's all my wife, man. So none of this goes down without her. Big shout out to my wife. Love you, babe. Um, thank you for the super chat, Tony P. 56. 
Trevor Patch, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you, my guy Trev. Writes Ramon sighting NFC East super friends beware. Um, hopefully, right now we got a schedule for Wednesday, 8:30 p. But obviously, that's subject to change. We'll see what happens. But the goal is to be able to still do that super friends um, chat. But obviously, I don't know what's gonna happen. Um, I gotta reach out to them just to let them know that you know anything could happen. But um, I would love to chop it up with them. I hope we get to do it because um, you see what it is. Like we got what we wanted. The Eagles are right there behind us. The Giants, you know, they 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 you know they're in the rearview mirror. But uh, Bad Dog's gonna tell it like it is, and I I can't wait to talk to all of those guys. I can't wait to have the Super Friends unite and uh, you know, visit the predictions before the season started and then get an update as to where we are right now and how we got here. So it should be a lot of fun if it happens. We'll see. Um, 80, uh, K80 Tick, thank you for the super chat. Uh, double up, uh, uh, thank you for doubling up. K80 Tick writes, Del Rio threw the rock. He should have thrown the rock. That's awesome. That that was his get back game. That was his revenge game. You know, everybody's going to try to downplay it. Like, oh, you know, it's just another game. No, it's not just another game. When Rivera won in Carolina, it wasn't just another game. You know, when Del Rio wins against the Raiders, it's not just another game. You want to beat that team. You feel like you were unjustly fired. Here's your opportunity to get some get back. So I'm glad Del Rio got to throw the rock. I can't wait to watch. And, uh, that's, that's emotional, man, and I'm happy for Coach Del Rio because earlier in the season, people were coming for that man's neck. Here in these comments, in these in these videos, in these streams, oh, Del Rio's old and the game's passed him by and this, that, and the third. And I'm glad Del Rio is had, having some success and he was able to get this one against his old mates. So um, that's awesome. Raymond Spencer. Thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. And thank you for becoming the newest member of the MOBB. Greatly appreciate you. Right. First and foremost, congratulations to you and your wife on the twins coming. Thank you. I really do appreciate that, Raymond. Secondly, he says, glad to be a member of the mob. I appreciate you for the great content when given. Absolutely. I, I thank you for supporting. As I always like to say, none of this is possible without you guys. So um, I, I thank every single one of you out there for supporting the Luigi Network and continuing to allow this to, to take place and transpire the way that it does. Um, let's see if we got any more Super Chats. Got another um, mob member here, Craig Harrison. Uh, you doubled up already. Now you're becoming a member of the MOBB. Stand up, Craig. Come on, Craig. Get up, Craig. Come on, Craig. Get up, Craig. You are now officially a member of the MOBB mob. You know what to do. Craig needs some love. He's yearning for your love, like the Gap Band. He's yearning for your love. So give him some. Craig Harrison, welcome to the squad. Glad to have you. Got one here from David Sanchez. Thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. David Sanchez writes, run it back with number four next year, question mark. Praying for your fam. Thank you, uh, David. And as far as Heineke, I mean, there's still a lot of football left to be played. But right now, I, I think whether we draft a quarterback or not, we're running it back with four, regardless. Like, I, he may only be a bridge to the, the young guy that they draft, but he's going to be the starter next year when the season starts. Now, if this team, you know, not only makes the playoffs, but makes a run and Heineke is fantastic, they may not draft a quarterback. We'll see. I, look, I don't know if you guys have been reading some of the things that have been said, but I saw a Bleacher Report article. You know, you can't believe anything you read, especially when we get to, to lying season, which is right around the corner. But uh, Police report reports saying, you know how it is. As we get close to the draft, teams get antsy. And, and they're saying that there could be no, you know, top 10 quarterback taken. 
like this could be one of those 2019 drafts, if you recall. It was just Kyler Murray. Every other quarterback in that draft class could stink or look like they stunk. That was the Dwayne Haskins, Daniel Jones, Drew Locke, Kyler Murray draft, if you recall. And it was just Kyler Murray. Well, there's not even a Kyler Murray in this year's draft class. If, if you love, and I watched uh, Kenny Pickett on uh, Saturday night against Wake Forest, and he had his moments, and he was banged up, and he gutted it out. He, he's got some tools to work with, but is he a difference maker? I don't know. I've got to watch film on Kenny Pickett, but I, I watched a lot of college football last night over this weekend, and I saw a lot of guys play ball, and I'm not sure that any of these quarterbacks necessarily move the needle all that much. So uh, this might be the year that you might want to run it back with Taylor Heineke. We'll see. Uh, but I don't know. We'll see what happens, honestly. Metaphor. Thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. My guy, Metaphor, writes, I hear heartbeats, Washington football team and the twins. That's right. Uh, the, the heartbeat of this team, the heartbeat of those twins, they sound the same, like one and the same to me. It's loud, it's strong, and it ain't going nowhere. And that's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it, uh-huh, uh-huh, that's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it, uh-huh, uh-huh. Can't even get the doo-doo-doos out because my voice, I lost it at, at this game with the Raiders, but it's all love. Heartbeat is strong. Just know that. Thank you for the super chat, metaphor. Um, let's see. Super chat here from Ivan LFC. Thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Ivan writes, should we give number four an extension? Nah, not yet. He's still got another year on his contract. He's not going anywhere. Um, still got season left. He could implode and knock on some wood here. Obviously, we don't want that to happen, but anything could happen these final five games of the season. This is when he's got a, a true chance to make some money. If he plays well down the stretch, we make it to the postseason, and then he gets it done. He's already shown that he's fearless and that these moments aren't too big for him and that he's got what they like to call a um, a quiet heartbeat, right? His pulse is quiet in these moments. Calm heartbeat is what they call it, a calm heartbeat. None of these moments are too big for him. Um, We'll see, but an extension doesn't have to be done now. If he gets something done the rest of the season and they love what they see and they think he's the guy, then it's when you offer up some more bread, but you don't have to do anything right now. Tony P56, thank you for the super chat. Uh, double up. Uh, uh. Greatly appreciate you, Tony P56, who writes, give the extension this offseason before the price run up. The price isn't going anywhere. Nobody's trying to steal Taylor Heineke from us, guys. Like, relax. You know, the, the first extension, like, first of all, the first extension that should be given this offseason is to Terry McLaurin. Like, that's the extension we need to worry about. And I'm not worried about that either. It's going to get done. But he, his extension, if there's even an extension, that's not something we have to concern ourselves with right now. Um, trust me. Um, he'll be here. He won't be here. Um, one sixth devil doc. Thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. And thank you for being a member of the MOBB who writes, Lou, I was at work, so I missed the game. Can you re recap the game and point out any standouts from our team? Score makes it seem similar to last week's game. Sure. I can definitely do that. So... Washington got the, the football first. They lost the toss. They uh, marched it right down the field, scored a touchdown, and took the lead 7-0. It was a beautiful drive, a nice mixture of run and pass. Um, and capped off by Logan Thomas, touchdown grab. Back in the end zone, beautiful catch, one hand stab. Um, Taylor was high on the throw. He went and got it, 7 -0. Uh, from that point on, the defense really ruled the day. Um, 
couldn't get it going offensively. We would start a drive. I don't think we went three and out once in this game. Yes. Hold on, hold on one second, guys. Score the touchdown, the defense steps up. We every time we got a drive going, penalty, um, a mistake. Um, it was crazy because we were ultra effective on third downs. Like, I'm gonna guess that we ended this game eight of 14 on third downs. Let's take a look. We were seven of 13 on third down. So it's not like we weren't efficient when we had the ball. The problem was we just we weren't good enough and we didn't get any chunk plays. One of the keys to the game was get chunk plays. Like don't make this thing this methodical slog where we gotta always be perfect and we would get a penalty. You know, we had a good run uh, by Gibby and they got um, Keith Ishmael for a holding. Uh, we would have a drive going, and then Taylor Heineke would get sacked. And, or we'd have a good drive going, and Gibby would take a two-yard loss on a, on a run. And it would, it, we, we just found ourselves in these positions where we just couldn't find a way to get the ball in the scoring range. We'd move it to midfield, and then the, stop, the drive would stall out. But anyway, we looked up, and it's, the Raiders got their first points of the game right before the half. They got a field goal, 7-3 at halftime. Um, they they got they won the t toss, so they got the ball after half. We got to stop. We got the football. We didn't do anything with it. They finally it, it went back and forth in the third quarter. Um, I thought the tackling was iffy in the first half. It got better in the second half. We missed some tackles. We had opportunities. Um, they scored a field goal. Um, the defense made some plays, got off the field, and forced the Raiders to have to settle for a field goal. So it was seven to six at the uh, midpoint of the third quarter. Then we went on a nice drive to end the third, and it spilled over into the fourth. Um, Heineke used his legs on that drive. Uh, you know, we, we did some really good things on the ground. Logan Thomas had a big catch and run on that drive, and uh, it capped it off with a touchdown toss to Antonio Gibson on third and goal from about the five or six yard line. So a uh, big drive to respond to the Raiders cutting it to one, and um, that made it 14 to six. The Raiders then responded with a touchdown drive. We had a bunch of penalties, including a rough in the passer on Derek Carr and uh, pass interference in the end zone that put it at the one when they were at like the 20 yard line or the 15 or whatever. So uh, we made mistakes. They took advantage and um, they didn't get the two point conversion though. So that made it 14 to 12. And then we responded again. After they cut it to two, we, we took the football, we drove it. Um, Actually, they they we responded, but we didn't score. So then they got the football. We were driving, and it got hit. Heineke's arm got hit. Interception. 
and the Raiders took that interception, turned it into three points. Big play by the defense. Heineke or uh, Derek Carr had an open receiver back in the uh, end zone, uh, but he overshot him a little bit. But Kendall Fuller still came and made a great play to uh, break it up, force them to keep the field goal. They took the lead 15 to 14 for the first time with two minutes and 31 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Heineke then took us on the drive, um, did what he always does, found uh, Adam Humphreys a couple of times. Um, Gibby had some good hits. And, okay, that's fine. Yeah, do what you got to do. Mm-hmm. So um, at the end of the day, um, you get into a situation where we got it uh, fourth and one. Um, what do you do? You know, it's fourth and one. And do you go and try to get the first down? It's a 48 yard field goal from where we sit. And it's lights out. My wife, her, her head is killing her. So, lights out, baby. So, do you go for it on fourth and inches? Or do you kick the field goal? Ron left the offense out there initially. I thought he should have gone for it because I didn't want Derek Carr to have any more time. But if you don't get the quarterback sneak, because that's the only thing you run in that situation. If you don't get it, you lose the game. So Ron wasn't willing to chance it. They they stay on the field. They act as if they're going to go for it, try to draw the Ravens off sides. It doesn't work. It was really not even a great attempt, to be honest. We never really gave any hard counts or any cadence. They called a timeout. They sent the field goal kicker out there. And we were all nervous. That ball was hooking, and then it lined up straight, and then it started to tail. But it snuck into that right upright, and it was good from 48 yards out. Gave us the 15-17 to lead with 37 seconds. On the ensuing kickoff, Johnson can't kick it. He's not a big kickoff guy. So he pops it up to about the six. And our old buddy, Peyton Barber, is their return man. And he returned it to right around the 25, where it would have been if it was a touchback. But the beauty was he burnt six seconds off the clock. So it's 31 seconds left. And Raiders only had one timeout because they called their two, two of their timeouts on our final drive to, to preserve clock so they could get it back in the event that we made a field goal. They honestly should have been using their timeout sooner once we got in the field goal range, but that's no here nor there. The bottom line is uh, the defense was able to get a stop, forced the Raiders to call their final timeout. There was a controversial non-call on a deep ball. Bobby McCain one-on-one with Zay Jones every bit of 60 yards down the field. Derek Carr just let it rip. We rushed three, we dropped eight, and somehow there's one-on-one down the field with the safety. Bobby McCain had a little tug of the jersey, but he let it go, and he played the ball. The the thing that saved him was he looked back for the football, and he made a play on the ball, hit Zay Jones, knocked the ball free. It's incomplete, no flag, and um, we were able to hold on after that. And they threw a a, a last-ditch Hail Mary, and it was incomplete, and we we won the game 17-15. So that's essentially it. Um, okay. Okay. All right. So, as y'all can see, I'm running out of time here. I'm going to try to get through these super chats as quick as possible and get out of here. They, they shut the lights out, and now the doctor's about to come in here. So, I'm about to get kicked off. <laughs> John Perez, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. My guy, JP writes. I don't know about the rest of you, but Ngakwe needs to be suspended multiple games. I saw him clearly hit Logan's knee with his helmet on a deliberate hit. Feels like Keanu Neal and Jordan Reed all over again. I, I don't think he needs to be suspended. I mean, that's football. You know, guys go low all the time. It just sucks because it was unnecessary. He didn't need to do that. It was on the backside of a play that he wasn't going to be involved in. What are you cutting a dude for? It's one thing if an offensive lineman is trying to cut you backside. You're a defender. Why are you going low on a guy that's coming to block you? That's trash. I don't think he needs to be suspended, but I do think he needs to be fined. That's what I do think he needs to be. Raymond Spencer, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Uh, double up. Uh, uh. 
Thank you for doubling up, Raymond Wrights. Here for the double up and the Joey Sly Guy song. He's a sly guy. I can't see my, my voice is gone uh, because I was yelling at TV. <clears throat> I'm going to try this one more time. He's a sly guy. Do, 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 do. Sly guy. Sly guy. He's a sly guy. Do, 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 do. That's the best I can give you right now. Uh, give me a couple more days and I'll be able to give you a better uh, rendition of that. Josh Kirby, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Thank you for being a member of the MOBB, my guy Josh writes. Enjoying the ride on Ron's Plan Express. Buckled in, but starting to get excited. I'm just glad you didn't get off. A lot, a lot of people got off of Ron's Plan early in the season when things weren't going well. It's easy to, to, to be on board when things are going right. It's hard, and that's when the true test of a man is when things aren't going right. How do you respond? And a lot of y'all, you know, decided to flee when Ron, and, and I told you, I'm never going to chastise anyone for that because this organization has built that up. They've, they've made us feel that way. But I told you, this is different. Embrace it. But it's hard when you've been beat down for, you know, over two decades to, to get people to understand that. So they have to see it. Now, hopefully two years of this, they'll realize this is different. You'd like to start off better, but here we are again fighting at the end of the season. And uh, yeah, you'd rather be eight and four like Dallas right now, but you're six and six and you've won four straight. Be excited about that. John Perez, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you, my guy John writes. I'd like to know what to expect with new LSU coach Brian Kelly and if I should be excited or prepared for disappointment. Um, I, he's going to get a different level of recruits. He's a hell of a recruiter. So you'll, you'll get some talent at LSU. I don't like Brian Kelly personally. I think he's a snake. I always felt that way when he was at Notre Dame. Um, you may win something with him though. He's a good coach. He's an ass, but we'll see what happens. Um, you got a good coach. Um, his time had come to an end at Notre Dame. There was only so much he could do at Notre Dame. And so you got yourself a really good coach. Uh, but he's a snake, so be careful. He's a good coach. Lorenzo Simpson, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Uh, double up. Uh, uh, thank you for doubling up, Zoe. Who writes, it looks like Logan Thomas tore his ACL. We'll need to look for a tight end one next season. Yeah, that's rough, man. And he had just got his money. I'm glad he got his money when he got it because um, that's that's brutal, man. It's brutal to see that happen the way that it did. And you hate to see it happen the way that it did because it was, like I said, it was unnecessary. But at the end of the day, it's football, man. Um, but I hope he does get, um, not suspended, but just a fine because it was dirty. Um, you hate to see guys get hurt that way. But anyway, I digress. Um, happening this late in the season, there, there's a real, realistic possibility that he'll have to start next season on the pup list. I mean, you think about an ACL, it's probably, a, it's a six month injury, but Logan isn't a spring chicken. So you're thinking that's seven, eight months, you know, we're in December right now. Timeline would put him in, if the surgery is clean, I would assume he's going to have the surgery here in the next couple of days. If there's no swelling, it goes down. Uh, they'll have the surgery here in the next couple of days. If he's if he rehabs eight months, that's August, right? But I, I assume he's going to start the season on the pup list next year. I'd be shocked. Logan, I mean, ACLs are different than Achilles, so I've seen guys come back quickly from ACLs. We'll see. That's brutal. But anyway, I digress. Um, that's going to do it for me, your man Louis T. Guys, um, this was a hell of a game. This was a ton of fun. Um, I'm excited. This just builds the, the suspense for the Dallas game that much more. And it's four straight. We're back to 500. It was a long, bumpy road. But here we are, six and six, and ready to fight for this division. Fight for what we feel like is rightfully ours. And I couldn't be more excited for this than I am. And I know you are as well. And, um, man, I, I couldn't have imagined six and six when we were two and six going into the bye week after an ugly loss on Halloween to the Denver Broncos. Who would have thought? Here we are. And now I'm ready. I'm ready to go after this wild card. But more importantly, I'm ready to go after this division. Are you?
think so. In any event, I am a Washington fan, Ashton Burgundy and Gold. My Washington spirit will never die. Washington spirit will never fold until we meet again. Hail to our beloved Washington football team. That's going to do it for me, your man, Louis T. Celebrate! We're six and six, four straight, back to 500. And now we got five division games staring us in the face, and I couldn't be more excited. Enjoy this one. Soak it in. And then it's Dallas week. We'll turn our attention to the Cowboys and focus in on the dirty, dick, dastardly Dallas Cowboys. Until then, enjoy it. Take it in. The Logan Thomas injury sucks. It hurts. It stings. And it was unnecessary. But as we've done all season long, we will rebound. We will rise. We will respond. Because that's what champions do. And that's what we've been doing during this four-game stretch. And now we'll have to do it again with another major injury to a key player on this team. But we will respond because that's what we do. Until next time, you guys, take care. God bless. And good night. Really appreciate all of your support. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you.